Opie and Anthony show. Louis C.K. in studio. Playing Boston, I don't know, a couple weeks. March 14th. I'll be in <laughs> March 14th, <laughs> yes. 4 p.m. theater. I'll be in San Francisco this uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Tom. You know about that. Now, Louis, what's this uh, viral video about? This is my last time on Conan. Well, How li- long ago? Li- literally. Is the show going now? <laughs> um, until they come back. But uh, it, it was October. And oh, it was okay. so- soon after the um, com- the uh, economy uh, imploded. Right. Uh, what happened to the economy? Oh, like you. Yeah. But uh, we're still fine. Yeah, below 7,000. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Who, who thought we'd see that? I feel the very Dow. confident with the Obama uh, ah, come on. economic package. It's the AIG thing this time around. Oh, is it? Yes. The Dow Jones that. going down is not. doesn't mean the economy's bad. No. It just means rich people are losing <laughs> some of their money. That's all it means. It's not, it's not a sign. But anyway, uh, so the economy was tanking. And uh, I had been doing this material uh, about it, and so I did Conan and uh, did the set, and it just it when it, I did it in October really hit a chord, and it went, it started to go viral. It got up to like three hundred thousand hits in like three days. Wow! And then uh, NBC took it down off of YouTube. Why? Because th- they're very smart. They're very savvy. This is the thinking. There's a video out there that's. Being seen by people maybe who don't even watch the Conan show, it's raising awareness of NBC and Conan for for no money. It's not costing a dime. Uh-huh. Free marketing, and it's going to people that want to see. It's not like forced marketing that doesn't work. Right. It's, it's it's targeted marketing, and it's working. People are seeking it out. Got to take it down. <laughs> yes. Now get rid of it. Get rid of it because they're not controlling it. They gotta understand like, what's how, going on what, out there. They're the dumbest people alive. It is amazing how stupid. Who gives that order? You know what? You know what? It's see at Letterman. If they do an, if he does an interview and something interesting happens before it's on the air, yeah, they you they put it on YouTube. They put a little ad on it. Yeah. yeah, but they also put it up at the best resolution. Like if I go look for a Letterman clip on YouTube. I go to the CBS one that they yep. put up because they put up the. I, I'll watch the ad to see it uh-huh. in high resolution. They put out before he even the show is on. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, to, and then that night everybody watches because the uh-huh. YouTube very. But on Conan, this one little interview just starts exploding, and they took it down, and then it was gone for like the whole year for you know uh, November, December, and January, <laughs> and now, <laughs> and then somebody stuck it up on I think Spike. TV or something, and mm-hmm. it started to gain interest again. And so somebody reposted it. I mean, I'm sure they'll take. It I'm down sure they'll take it down now. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but it's exploded. Stupid. It's gotten. It's gotten this huge, crazy amount just, of uh, hits. It's up to like uh, close to a million. One of them. There's two up. Uh, one is like up to two fifty, and one's like a, like. Oh, well, it's like seven fifty now, I guess. Right, that that's awesome. Um, and it keeps coming from all these different angles and stuff. It hit a nerve with your stuff. Huh? Yeah, and it's interesting because it's these different groups of people. Because some like real sort of anarchist hippie people go like, "Yeah, screw capitalism," which is the the, the essence of what I was saying was that I'm glad capitalism is failing because it wasn't working anyway. Uh, but then uh, this guy, oh god, I'm trying to remember his name now. Kevin Levine is that Levin? He's a really he's a a, he, ABC Radio really huge uh, conservative talk show. Rush guy. Limbaugh. <laughs> Mark Levin. Mark Levin. He played it on okay. his on his radio show and the whole thing. And then he came on and said, this guy is right on the money. He is, yes, the Obama administration and the liberals are saying things are bad and they're not. And he turned it into this whole... Cons- he turned it into... So I started getting all these emails from conservatives saying, yes, you're one of us. And like it's on Christian websites That's and all this hysterical. stuff. hysterical. And then I, I actually got it, I got invited to this huge conservative uh, uh, thing. Not this... It was a... It's a It's a thing, though, that, that Rush goes to and everybody goes to. It's a not that hearing doctor. It's this big. (laughs) (laughs) What is it? A hearing doctor? Because Rush has all all two empty dishes on his head. (laughs) How about a questionable doctor? If we're talking about Rush Limbaugh. And a few pills. But they asked me to perform at this thing that they all go to wow. and stuff. And you said so, no, obviously, right? Well, I was working. I would have done it in a second. That would have been a good experience. Just to go. Well, now we got to play the bit. Okay. We should, we should play huh. it. Oh, okay. Why don't we link it on onaradio.com so they can see the video of this? Oh, yeah. But this is uh, getting a lot of talk, went viral for Louis C.K. Check it out. Those were simpler times, I think. I just feel like when you're home. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, there you have it, that's Louis C.K. Man. That's brilliant stuff, Jesus, Louis. Man. Thanks, man. Very nice. That thing is uh, viral, like we were just talking about. It's uh, it's popping up all over the place. That is so goddamn funny. I want to curse. Yeah. <laughs> it is so goddamn funny. Thanks, man. Right we're... on the money. God, how spoiled. Well, just entitled. We're you know. spoiled, oh. entitled little babies. The thing is that people expect things. To be, like, who owes you a perfect day as a consumer? Yeah, yeah. Like, who owes you that? Like, people think it's in the Constitution right. that they just have a clear signal without any interruptions. <laughs> it's 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 as good as it is the cell service. Right. You know what I mean, and the airplane stuff. They're 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 throwing human bodies into the air like thousands every second. <laughs> There's like thousands of airplanes in the air right now, uh -huh. and then they get. I mean, it's amazing what these people do. And Sully, by the way, this guy who like lands his plane on the Hudson and he's a hero, and then the passengers meet him and cry and show him their ugly babies and say, "Look, you know, this kid's not a orphan because of your heroism." I promise you, seconds, like three minutes, three minutes before he did that, they were on the ground in LaGuardia. Uh, taxing around, and he was making his announcements, and everybody in the back's going, "Oh, could he shut up? I'm on the phone. <laughs> Drive the bus, you douche. Nobody cares what you say." <laughs> and and they don't even give him the credit because I've had people say to me that he was a uh, that it was a miracle. That's what everybody says. Yeah, yeah. It was God's hand. <laughs> give him the credit. He trained for it. Yeah, he could have let go of the. Uh, yeah, how do you let not go give of the it? controls and everything? Yeah, God point. didn't land the. God threw the birds in the engines. <laughs> <laughs> That's what God did. But so nobody, this the what it takes for a guy like that to fly a plane. Nobody respects it. They yeah. just want to go when they want to go. And even if the forty minutes isn't even making you late, it's just no. irritating you. No, you're not getting there and then have to be, 99.9% .9 of the people are not getting to their destination yep. and have to be anywhere within 40 minutes. No. So you're okay. You're, you're, you're living a great dream of a life. Yeah, yeah. Everybody is right now. It's a great time to be alive. It God, is a great time to be alive. It's just this big take for granted. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> The whole thing. bank thing is hilarious. Yeah, the bank thing because we you, forget it, that's how hard it was to have, forget. and you would have to figure out. Well, all right, it's a three day weekend. Or, or, is this going to be enough money for the whole week? Yep. You have to figure that crap out. Yeah, because you couldn't take all your money out, right? And you had to go. Well, if I have more fun than I'm planning, I'm going to be yeah, screwed. Sure. And okay. you'd actually have to stop doing stuff if you ran out of money. You, yep. There wasn't this. You'd be constant, out of money. Yep. This constant. And you'd be flow. so bummed because you're like, oh, they, the banks don't even open till most cases Tuesday. Yep. I got no money. What am I going to do? Yeah. You, you had to offer and just sit in a chair or in a car and just look around you sure. and go, well, yeah. I can't do nothing right and, now. And There's nobody to talk to. I'm not at a phone. And yeah, yeah. I have I'm just no. a person. Leaving your house was like going west. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, you left your house and you were just yeah. out of touch with everybody. You didn't know what was You hoped that the people you said, well, meet me at this bar at 530 mm -hmm. are going to show up or whatnot. Mm -hmm. That's you check you know, up on yeah, anybody. Is, this stuff is great. This technology is great. And I've had I've read like comments on YouTube where people say that uh, this guy's a primitivist. This oh, word shut that, up. Said, that you hate technology. You're a primitivist. Yes, that's not the point. The, the point isn't that technology is is bad for us. The point is that it's as good as it is, and people have to stop. People are so miserable. People spend so Expecting many hours perfection. pouring over their products and then throwing it away and buying another one. <laughs> like, it's so far from the basis of, like, being a human being, which is, like, um, I'm going to freeze this winter if I don't make money and buy these certain things. Right. You know, like, it used to be you worked at a button factory, and then you took your button money and you bought some lard and bread for your kids. <laughs> and then you save a little money so you could buy your kid one wooden toy at Christmas. But now the toy is an exploding robot that gives you an enema. And, it's, <laughs> and you buy it for your kid before you buy food. Yeah, like That's the yeah. first thing. And you buy one for you. And then you go, this thing sucks. And you get mad at it. You throw it away and buy another one. Mm -hmm. And there's this, there's this incurable, there's oh just this God. misery everywhere. People are miserable. Very few Americans are like content. The phone, it, it, uh, the, it, absolutely yeah. right, man. Uh, I'm just agreeing with it. Yeah, the phone it's, thing is really funny too, because you also get forget that yeah, people would call your house and no one's mm -hmm. there, and they couldn't leave a message. No, what if they had something really important, you have mm -hmm. to like sync up now there, for that important whole, info. Whole friendships that uh, wouldn't exist without the ability to connect that. Sure, because you'd call somebody and the mm -hmm. phone would ring with a dog looking at it for a few minutes. <laughs> And then you, in the room the phone is in, like there was a room that the phone lived in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. 
Away from the one TV. Phone. It was the phone. You the called phone. it the phone. <laughs> what was the last time you said who's on the, the phone? phone? Somebody's and, on his phone or somebody's on my phone. And you would know based on who you called how many rings before mm -hmm. you realized yes. they weren't home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like some people, two rings. If that yeah. thing wasn't up, it's like third ring. Eh, I don't yeah. think he's home. But then, like, Grandma, yeah. ten rings. Yeah, you picture her the sliding door. Yeah, that yeah. Oh, she's got to get, you know, <laughs> feebly walk somewhere. Yeah. But there was the, the rule of thumb where you were supposed to let it ring ten times mm -hmm. yes. before you hung up and realized, I have that was no courtesy. contact with this person. No contact. There's and also, no way I can have contact right. with this person. You didn't even occur to you to think... Uh, they don't know that I called. Yeah. That didn't even occur to you. They'll, the They'll never I know that I called if something happens. Yeah. And they may call me and I may not be here. That's probably what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, people would just, people, people, there weren't even answering machines. I remember a time no, when no, answering, no machines answering machines were fancy. That was a fancy thing to have an answering machine. Yeah. Before that, people would just go home. Only Mannix and Cannon had and answering machines. <laughs> exactly. They were running business. Rockford. And yeah, Rockford. <laughs> yeah. Hello, this is Jim Rockford. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Stupid song would start. Yeah. But <laughs> for most people, it was just uh, somebody might contact you. If, if you know, it's just weird to think, think of that now. Yeah, yeah. The, the one thing you said that was very funny was the sparks inside <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like there were. No, it was a copper coil. If yeah, you took apart a, a phone, coil. which I did often, it was a copper coil yep. that you made sparks and it went down a copper wire, literally a, a copper wire from your house to the other person yeah. you're talking to. It, your like, phone, like, tin, like cups with a string. You didn't buy a phone at so the bizarre. store. No, we and rented plug it our into phone. the wall. It was Bell telephone, it was property phone. of Bell telephone. It yeah. was hardwired yeah. into your wall. Yeah. So wherever when you moved in, yep. that phone was sitting there. Yes, and when you didn't pay the, the bill, which my mom often would run out of money and not pay the bill, yeah. they would come and take the actual phone out. They'd take the phone. The phone would go into a truck full of ugly, Other. Dirty, dirty phones <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in a pile like Auschwitz, just all laying with their cords tangled together in a big pile. <laughs> Uh, Dice did a bit about uh, the old phones. The rings? And, yeah. The ring, ring, and how heavy they were. Yeah, you And how you somebody. could just beat somebody yes, with them. Could. Now you can't beat someone with no. your cell phone. Just, just, just the ridiculous. receiver, you could beat somebody to yeah, death with your receiver. Just the receiver, it was a weapon. Yes. Your phone was a weapon. It was made of this Bakelite plastic. Yeah, well, completely unbreakable. Yeah. You could not break your phone. No, not at all. <laughs> Although that cord would constantly, you know, the worse you stretched it, mm -hmm. the uh, the longer and oh, more yeah. um, uh, unwieldy it, it yeah. got. And it was a Garrett. It was another one. Yes, yeah, a you Garrett. Could, you could choke it because that thing would never snap. No. You no, could break a lot of stuff with that long uh, phone cord. You'd pull it into yeah. a bedroom and slam the door on the cord yes. to get your privacy. A lot no, of and the thing is, the things people are impatient about, too. It's like a guy standing on a street corner, furious. Because it's taking a little while to load a picture of Axl Rose on his phone for him to like <laughs> yeah. look at him for a second <laughs> to remember what the guy looked like for yeah. a second. Oh my so, god! Look at fat Axl Rose now. Yeah. What's he look like now? I took out. It really it's is taking too long. I, I took out half of Anthony's ex-mother-in-law's house with the long phone oh, cord. Oh, with the long that? phone cord she used to have. <laughs> I I uh, I still do. I'm amazed by technology, and mm. sometimes I do step back and look at it and go like. Wow, that is effing amazing mm -hmm. that we have this. Things like flight, though, you do still take for granted. Yeah. I, I know that, yeah. but but like newer technology, the iPhone for one thing. I know Jimmy doesn't like it, hate but, it. But the principle behind it, um, the fact that you used to have to sit there and and think about who that actor was in that yeah. movie, yeah. And, and that would drive you crazy. You'd be, like two people be sitting there going, "I know the name, I know," and for a half hour, an hour. You could not concentrate yeah. on anything else. And now you're like, hold on, IMDB, boom, it was this, this movie, this year, yeah. blah, blah. Ron Jeremy. All your Ron Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> it, you just, you I have answers at your no, fingertips now. I have an iPhone, which I don't even use because I have, I like my Blackberry. That's hey! Like, yeah, Jackass I am. Like, I've got two, I've got the two leading you need machines. The two ones. Sure. And the iPhone is for when I, my Blackberry breaks because I throw it around a lot. <laughs> so I was at my mother's house and, uh, I, sh I was, I was bitching about my iPhone. I go, yeah, I got one, but it's like, and she goes, what does that even do? She didn't even understand any facet of, my mother's a computer programmer, but she, com oh my God. But, um, punch cards? Yeah, yes. She <laughs> yes. used punch cards. 
She had uh, the she, ENIAC. <laughs> but consumer products, she doesn't know anything about those. And so she said, what is that? What's the big deal with it? And I show it to her, and I just start running her through what iPhones do. Yeah. And like I said, I said, think of any song you've ever heard. And for some reason, she said, uh, Footloose. I don't know why my mom. <laughs> and, I, and I just go, click, 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 foot, and I'm just playing it. Like instantly, and she was she was like, "What? I don't." And then I said, "Think of anything that's ever happened, like literally, just anything in history." So she thought of the most. She said, "Well, I was thinking yesterday about when Martin Luther King was uh, assassinated, and Robert Kennedy was making a speech in the moment that he was shot, and he got told during the speech. So he announced to a bunch of black people that he was speaking to. He announced to them that oh. that Ro Martin Luther King was shot, mm -hmm. and it was a really dramatic moment. And I just go." I go on uh, YouTube on my iPhone, uh -huh. uh, uh, RFK, MLK shot, and in seconds, I'm, we're listening to that speech. And my mother was just, it was one of those things where she just didn't, she was like, where am I? What is this? Did she try to like, kill what you? Happened to the Wizard! <laughs> Wizard! <laughs> like Carrie's mother. <laughs> in the closet. Pray together. We'll pray. <laughs> that is, I, I did pretty much the same thing um, at uh, my mother and Sal's house with the iPhone. I was showing mm -hmm. them things. You know, you just pop on, because my mother's just a movie buff. Yeah. So I go to IMDb. And she's like, I don't need that. I have my Leonard Malton book. <laughs> and she, she's got this book that she gets yes. every year. Yes. It's Leonard Malton's book. Yes. And it's just got everything you can get on IMDb in a second yeah. in this 8,000-page gigantic yeah. book. Yeah. Like, Mom, look. But it doesn't have Dane Cook's works in progress. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yes. In, That's what I mean. In, in production. So. Like, and you could cross-reference actors yes. in, in the same movie so you could see if they were in the same movie together. Is it, yep. Leonard Malton book. All right, Mom, whatever. Yeah, all right, let's take a break. So th we're going to link that to onaradio.com. Okay. That, that uh, fan viral video that's Thanks. all over the place. Louis C.K., Orpheum Theater, Boston, March 14th. 14th. All right, Thank you. we'll continue. Opie and Anthony. By the way, I'm OP Radio on Twitter. I say that because during the break, Louis C.K. was talking about uh, social networking, and you just joined Twitter. And, and what did you say? Oh, it's like having another data entry job. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, I've got this thing I got to, oh. It's what you do. It's i got to keep my Twitter entry. going. In between yeah. radio jobs, I had data entry jobs, mm -hmm. and you're, 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 you nailed so you're it. Clack, 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 clack. I well, forgot, yeah. Add friends on Facebook. Fake friends. What's that? Fake friends. Fake friends. No, they're friends. Are they really? Those are my friends. Are they really? Yes. That's why I like Twitter. Actually, Facebook apparently is why this clip just blew up. Facebook is what. Hey, what you just throw it around a little bit. I yep. like Twitter because they're followers. You're following people, they follow you. It's not that fake friend crap. Yeah. I don't call it what it is. Follow I'm following anybody. you. You're following me. You know what I just did with the Twitter? I just linked that video that we just played for everybody. Did you? Yeah, to all my followers. Oh, there you go. See, see, that's. I don't even know how. But to you don't like you don't like don't the Facebook and all that. I do. No, I, it's okay, I and mean, it's a network, but it's work. It's like yeah. I'll sit down and start doing my Facebook and stuff. Yeah. I'll keep this. What my, 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 my yeah. daughter has uh, uh, a webkin, which is a little uh, stuffed animal. I know the webkin thing. It's in front of you. It's a physical animal. Yeah. But then you go on, and there's a cartoon of it on this website, and you feed it. Yeah. Food, you buy it gifts, you earn money to mm -hmm. get it things, uh -huh. and life, and then she's 60, and it's over. Like, it's just so much time. I don't think people realize how much time you're spending. Yeah. And it's the same thing as Facebook. You sit there, and you glaze-eyed go through your friends. You, you manage it, do all the management that's not even fun. Yeah. And then you find one or two friends from high school to say, oh, yeah, you're fatter now. That's interesting. Like, wow. And then you go... And then you go, well, my life, it's been four or five hours. I just did that. <laughs> so I don't let my daughter do this. I don't how old let her your, do it anymore. How old are your daughters? Seven and three. Oh, okay. My my sister's kids are a little older than yeah. yours. And they uh, she discovered they got Facebook pages, so she put a stop to that. Yeah, you can't. Uh, like 10, uh, I think 11 and 9 now, I believe. And well, my daughter asked because I just kept saying, no, can I do webkin? No, nah, not right now, honey. I just would say not right nah, now. No, you can waste your life. And then one day she said, hey. How come never with the whip? Like, never. Oh, I can't do it. And she she's made, on to you. She made a case for it. I said, okay, I'm not going to just like, because I don't believe in just telling your kid, because I no. said so. Do as I say. Yeah, like, what are you teaching the kid except for that you're a fat idiot they want to get away from? <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing you're giving them. 
Why not let, look, the kid, like, I always give my kids, like, a day in court, because that's a skill they're going to learn. Yeah, they're going to need that, yeah. Is how to, like, I'm like, okay, if you have it, l- let me hear it out. And she goes, well, I like doing Webkins. You say no every time, and, and uh, I don't understand why you don't tell me why. And so I gave her the benefit of the doubt, and I explained to her, your life just goes <laughs> in this hole of waste <laughs> when you sit at a, I said, you have your whole life to do that. You're going to probably do a lot of that. That's so true. You're going to go on computers, and you're going to spend a lot of time looking. In, but when you're not looking into a computer, you're reading, you're coming up with games, you play with your sister, you do all this stuff. And uh, I just think it's better for your brain. You're really smart, and that, that's just going to make you, might make you boring. And uh, mm. so for now, I'm just saying, I said, but if you really want, if you really feel strongly about it, we'll make some time for it and put like a clock on a, you know, put a timer yeah. on it. And uh, she didn't, never asked me again. Uh, which I hope is because she thought, oh, she was flattered that I thought she was smart enough to take care of her brain. I doubt and that it. she understood the idea. It also might be just that I intimidate her. Yeah. <laughs> just, just trying to find just... someone online who will kill you for money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Hey, uh, they're asking for your Twitter name now. Oh, it's CK. Somebody took Lewis CK, so it's CK, <laughs> CK Lewis. Isn't that great? You can't yeah. even have your own uh, name on the social network. Yeah, exactly. Sites. Let's say hi to Roy in Pittsburgh. Roy. Yes. Hey, Roy. Hey, boys. Go ahead, Roy. Yes. We've, greetings are over with. He was talking about the answering machine. Uh-huh. Way, way back, like, late, probably mid to late 60s, the uh, telephone company, when it was just the telephone company, mm-hmm. would not uh, let you have an answering machine. If they found out that you had one, they would shut off your service. Answer machine's illegal? Back, uh, there was a time they were illegal? I don't like, remember that. For recording, maybe? It wasn't illegal, it's just that the company wouldn't tolerate it. It wasn't illegal, just like a, a violation of your term of service, you know what I mean? Maybe, uh, oh, you are not to record, blah, blah, blah? I have no idea. Right. I don't it, remember it was, that. Uh, I think it was kind of like the big brother, you know, you can't record your conversations you have with somebody else. That's yeah. Just- all right. Uh, Roy, your phone's a little crappy, so but th- thank <laughs> yeah, you for that. Goddamn phone. Yeah, your phone. It really is. The phone sucks, Roy. Hey, we got a <laughs> we got a hot breastfeeding story for everybody. What? Mm, oh yeah. Suck it. <laughs> <laughs> suck that milk out of it. Are you a fan of the breastfeeding? Sure, it's better for the kids. When brain. you see a young mom out there for the kids sure. nursing her young, talking about the kids. It's l- it's rarely like a nice firm boob. <laughs> no. It's usually like a flat, like a big, uh, like big a wine skin, f- floppy thing. Yeah, <laughs> a wine satchel at a Grateful Dead show. Yeah. Just, it depends how young the kid is. Yeah. Sometimes they're, you know, yeah, mm. little. Mm. Yeah, but they, you have to like. To get, I don't know. I don't see getting <laughs> getting aroused. You have to like use Photoshop in your head and edit out the baby all the way to the nipple. <laughs> like you have to like sort of yeah, air, airbrush really, out the child. It really does just destroy any yeah. sexual. And, and also, generally, a woman breastfeeding doesn't look like a perky like uh, beer commercial model. She's no. like a tired woman, frumpy mom, just that's really just... frazzle haired, puke on the shoulder. Yeah, she's had it with lights, yeah, really just just baggy just... eyes. And slept in days Sit outside the shopping center. Yeah, or no, and, and breastfeeding is exa- literally it's exhausting. <laughs> like it takes a huge chunk out of a woman. Sure, like, it's just like it's murder. James from New Hampshire. This is not a couple of letters a sexy story. Well, let's find I, out. I think it's very sexy. Listen to this one. It was an unforgettable and shocking sight that prompted one unforgettable. <laughs> it was an unforgettable and shocking sight. Was a talking like this. Oh, every time we play a clip, every time we play a clip, we gotta go through the fake voice douche. It was an Unforgettable. Why don't you just use your real voice? <laughs> it's just, not that hard. Just go on, use your real voice. Just feel like, like, like a human being. One show does that on the uh, Ira Glass. You ever listen to him on uh, NPR? Glass, no. He does this show called This American Life. Okay. And he just talks like this. I'm Ira Glass. We're going to do a show about that. He just talks like a yeah, person, right. and it's through the roof. No, See, but this adds oh, absolutely oh, zero oh. to talk like this <laughs> in order to get people's attention, or they'll think you're just a normal person <laughs> and not the special news person that I am with this voice. <laughs> and you have to shed your accent so you can work anywhere in the country. Anywhere. Yes, it I was can work in New York. Unforgettable. You don't want to sound unforgettable. It's weird that they take on a voice that uh, they share. 
It's the same. Yeah, it's the same accent or uh, dial, it's, whatever. It's you like call rock it. and roll. It's like that that kind of. I don't even know what modern music is, but it's that thing where the girls sing like this. You don't. You don't, you don't talk like that. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I, an unforgettable and shocking sight that prompted one driver. What? One second. And also, Ohio. it's the peaking. It's like you can, with your finger up and down, oh, it's an oh, unforgettable, oh, shocking oh. sight. You can almost it's watch the bottom, feed bottom, meter. Bottom, bottom. Yes, exactly. Like working as he's a bottom, talking. Bottom, 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 unforgettable, sing-songy voice thing I do. Yes. It was an unforgettable and shocking sight that prompted one driver in suburban <laughs> Dayton, Ohio. To Ohio? Why are you hitting Ohio? Ohio. Dayton. One driver in Ohio. And he goes, Dayton, Ohio. Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> well, we're just picking this idiot apart, aren't we? It's accurate. Well, he sucks. <laughs> Die. Driver in suburban Dayton, Ohio, the phone police <laughs> wow. found I'm following behind a lady in a van who is driving while breastfeeding her newborn baby and talking on the cell phone. Mm. Oh, Bring your goody two shoes. Shut up. You mm. rat. It's a rat. Whole family's rat. <laughs> you see what people are doing on the highways these days? Leave her mm. alone. Is she swerving? Yeah, so she what if an airbag line? is oh. going to destroy the kid's head <laughs> oh, forever please. and her boob at the same time? <laughs> that is true. And more importantly, her breast. <laughs> <laughs> Blood and milk everywhere. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, breastfeeding her newborn baby and talking on the cell phone. <laughs> nice. That's multitasking. Nice. Yeah, Taking a cell phone working call mom. And... You walk up to the scene of the crash. Yeah. Apparently, she was drinking a fribble. Um, <laughs> strawberry fribbles all over the windshield. Like, oh my God, it's not a fribble. Feeding her newborn <laughs> baby and talking on the cell phone. Officers later caught up with 39 year old Janine Compton Strange. at her home. She did admit to breastfeeding her child while driving. She kind of indicated that it's more or less a routine thing that she does, mm -hmm. and that when her child needs to eat, she's going to provide the the need. <laughs> Pull over, you retard. Yeah, you can wait, right? Ugh. Please. Stupid. Everybody in the story is stupid. <laughs> you know, like From the animal. anchor to the interview to the woman to the, everyone yeah. on that highway. Even the kid. What yeah, about? just drop a bomb <laughs> on that community. What about the eyewitness? You don't like yeah. the eyewitness? He screw him. He's a yeah. tattletale. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm going to call Rash. the local news. Oh, look at that. Police informed her that all children inside a car must be restrained and charged her with child endangerment. Mm. The police report shows Compton claims she knew all about safety, but was more concerned about feeding her baby. I hate Compton this guy. faces up to one hundred eighty baby in jail feeding her $1, baby. $1,800 fine. If she's convicted uh, and of misdemeanor, it's kind of a cool story, and he made it boring as hell. It's, a it's, it's weird because he started up here, yeah, but, but then he came yeah, in yeah. between. Oh, no, you got to get serious. Lower, fine, you you get baby, serious. fine. No one says fine. Yeah, fine. fine. There's no Y in that word. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not F e i y y y y n n n n n n n n n n n n n n n n n to be yes. zilch oh, like this. That's not a nice thing. <laughs> like this. Yeah. You must add vowels. Y'all's to everything you say. Long days. You say. Fly in your Fine. Where do they teach you that? Oh, God. Why it, do you do it? it no one it needs it. Every broadcasting school. It's oh. terrible. It, it, uh, talk from the diaphragm. That'll get you a job. Oh. Gotta talk from way down here. Shut up. He's well, that just took us out. A, he's sitting there with a Dunkin' Donuts coffee and a script, reading into a mic. Yeah, yeah. Just it's my hair unforgettable. Thing. Can you uh, can you do that again? Uh, hit unforget. Hit date. Uh, hit Ohio. <laughs> Ohio. That was Hello. real nice, Bob. Thank you. He knows I know. Good one. Yeah. Is that a okay? take? <laughs> How do I look? My hair okay? <laughs> uh, it's a voiceover, Bob. Five, four, three. <laughs> Hi, I'm here in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> it just is terrible. Yeah, it, it, it's a booby story, and we're talking yeah. about a guy talking. That's well, how distracting. The guy, I think the guy made us all tired. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Well, no, it's like the, the B, every, every nap now. In the BBC, if you ever listen to BBC Radio, oh they yeah, have their own they're the version. worst. They their own version of that. Every story has AIDS and genocide. Mm, genocide. Yeah. Um, AIDS. AIDS. 
Don't forget about sushi. There's a problem in Africa. It's the problem of AIDS. <laughs> like they gotta go up or something yeah. at the end. Money is being sent from around the world. <laughs> All right, George. <laughs> <laughs> and Ringo, what are you doing? It's horseradish. You're most likely to have come across it as the powerful paste of Sabi. That's the Sabi. Oh, yeah, 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 Sabi. The powerful the paste of the Sabi. Yeah, listen. A little breath. Yeah. Each word. <laughs> speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Wasabi. It's horseradish. You're most likely to have come across it as the powerful <laughs> paste wasabi that's eaten with sushi. Sushi. <laughs> sushi. <laughs> with sushi. Sushi. The powerful paste wasabi <laughs> eaten with sushi. Come across it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, what happened? I just said across it. <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm hyperventilating. I'm British. Two big Brits. All right. <laughs> what do we? Uh, uh, what do we got? Louis C.K. March fourteenth, Orpheum Theater, Boston. Boston. Nice. Yeah, I like that Orpheum Theater. Yeah, it's a great. I'm theater. going back to Cleveland too in April, and I think that's where I'm shooting. I'm shooting another yeah, special. Nice. Either in Milwaukee or Cleveland, wherever wherever we sell the most tickets. Wait, basically. this guy. This guy's Tim in Philly. Tim, go ahead. What are you saying, hey, hypocrites? Why? Hey. Hypocrites. How you doing today, hypocrites? All right, now Whoa, tell us dude. why. Well, easy. That's yeah. tough talk. Whoa, Ooh. hey. Go but ahead. he was nice. He asked how we're doing. Fine, doing thank o you. I'm doing okay, too. I'm a little tired. How are you? What do you got, Tim? Uh, fantastic. Hey, Fat Jimmy, remember your stupid voice? Opie, remember your stupid voice back oh, in the radio days? This guy's really I never had a stupid radio you, voice, to be honest with you. Are you a radio guy that is yeah, bitter Jimmy, or something? Jimmy, I was always perfect, by the way. I do. It doesn't matter what are I you do. a radio guy that's bitter? I don't. I don't understand. It's part of the profession. It's part of the territory. You are a radio guy that's bitter. <laughs> <laughs> what radio job did he get uh, kicked <laughs> off of? You know, I really don't care. At the end of the day, I know. Hey, your voice on stage was awful. Opie, you're it's your opinion, you douche, you stupid <laughs> fat. I love, I love this guy. I have no problem with Tim. He hasn't said one bad thing about me. <laughs> Tim, Tim, it's either a bit. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Wait. caller. Hold on, caller to people who are doing it for a living. Yeah. Um, Tim is just annoyed. Uh, I never had a radio voice, so where's your criticism? I'm a comic, so I never had a radio voice. And I openly admitted when I got into the business, I did go with the radio voice thing and realized how stupid it was, and it was able to, I would like to change my whole, further. whole delivery and, and go, wow, I'm going to try something different, and it worked out for me. Who says so you have to problem? be, like, vetted to make fun of something? Who yeah. says that you have to have, like, any track record? What if you did, <laughs> what if you did have a, a funny radio voice, I, I and what if Jimmy it. never was funny once on stage in his entire right. career? Right. Why does that mean that we can't make fun of this guy. Who cares? Tim, what's your Who says you have to be qualified to just to rag on somebody on the radio? What, what happened, Tim? Let's, let's what's be sense of Tim, Justice. why are you so upset about this? Uh, are you in the business? You do uh, voiceovers? What do you do? I'm not going to get involved in what I do in my personal life, in my professional Aww. life. I'm just going baby to boy! <laughs> baby boy! <laughs> Come on, baby boy! It didn't work out the way you planned. Don't be shy. What happened? Tim, you know, I'm actually going through some tough times. So I really appreciate you bashing me. So. Oh, well, then don't make the radio don't call, don't call radio. on your tough times, yeah. baby boy. We didn't call you, you douche. What's the matter? Well, my point is, Jimmy, that voice you're doing... <laughs> little boy, oh, stop man, yelling. Jimmy. You'll never get radio job You're doing silly. that, little boy. You're so silly doing the baby boy. Look yes, here. I you're am. Wacky, wacky, aren't you? Baby boy, what happened? Have to go against Jimmy. Did, why, why can't you admit the fact that... Baby, baby boy, voices? what's that? You're not answering the question. What happened? Did you go to broadcast school? Did you tell them you were going to make it big? I can do it, guys. And then you can't do it. What a prick. All right, look. What's here's the matter? Legitimately, though, sir, you're calling here to say that because Aww. of the past of people in the studio, we shouldn't be talking about what we're talking about. So why can't we inquire after your past? Yeah, Tim. Uh, to uh, say if yeah. you're qualified to say what you're saying. Yeah, yes. why you not? Really valid point, sir. Answer. Because I'm not making fun of it. It's we're you're making, making fun at it. Yeah, but you're making fun of <laughs> You're, <laughs> and you're not making a living out of it. How's that feel, bum? You're <laughs> Keep listening, baby boy. <laughs> you're saying, I, who are we to make fun of that? I really want to know why this hit a nerve with you, Tim. I don't really yeah. understand. What, what didn't work out, Timo? Come on. What, why is yeah, this hit a I'm nerve? Not, Timmy Kins, come I'm on. Not, 
Will you let me talk? <laughs> Why, who else would let you talk besides the entire business? <laughs> Sit at home talking to a mic like Rupert Pumpkin, boy. <laughs> Ma, please. Oh, go, ahead, go ahead, baby boy. Now, I'll, I'll allow you to talk. Now. Hold on. I'll allow you to talk on the radio, as was your dream. Go ahead, baby boy. Uh, Jim, remember when you were on stage years ago? You're a high pitched voice. Yes, I do. You're yes. making fun of the inflection of people But I'll tell in you what, I, an excellent point, Tim. Uh, first of all, I appreciate the fact that you have listened and worshipped for so long. But I will say this. I very soon after that recognized what garbage that was and began poking fun at it and shed it. I didn't, I didn't perpetuate it by continuing to do it. I knew it was garbage. I admit it. I listened early on. This is a guy who's probably in the business for a while. He's a major. That permeates he, the business. He's a major professional now. This is yeah. not a guy just starting out with some kind of podcast just, or or yes. very very local radio. That's that's why we have a problem with this. this. So this, what do this, you have? This, so this, where, why is this hit a nerve, Tim? Were you in the business? Did you do voiceovers? What happened? And I just know you guys just put yourselves on this high pedestal. Like, I, 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 really all pedestals are high, high silly. Or, it's all pedestals. There's no such thing as a low pedestal. It wouldn't be a oh, pedestal. There there. It's a, it's a, a low no, they're not. They're not pedestals. They're low. They're steps. It's oh, just, like a, a pedestal can be low relative to a. I don't pedestal. think we put ourselves on a high pedestal. I think. All right. I just don't want to let that one go I, by. I think. I think we have a problem with news people and radio people that use that fake voice. We hate it. Well, Tim. I'm on a pedestal, so strain your neck. Look it up, Timmykins. Tim, I just want to ask you. Uh, uh, what is it about me you like? I uh, think you're just an alcoholic, and I am one, too, at the end of the day. So I there you really go. Oh, okay. There you go. But he's got a problem with my drinking, but who doesn't? Was there anything else you wanted to get off your chest, Tim? What's not working out for you? You're having some tough times. Let's work through that, Tim. if you don't mind. Tim, what, should I ever, what the hell is wrong with you? Oh. Like, what? Oh. You're making money selling books off dick jokes, and I'm just sitting here just... Now, Tim, don't better. use such language and stop calling under different names. I did make a lot of money, two bestsellers. Yes, I earned that. What's the matter, kiddo? You had a dream of writing and you're not quite good enough to cut the mustard there either? Is that what happened? Uh, screw you, Jim. What's the matter? Nobody wants to hear what you have right. to say? They what, told you you were what, a funnier, one, interesting guy growing up and you're not? What, one, two, three, cry. <laughs> Go ahead. Come on, let's squirt some tears. What Go is ahead. it? You talk about my books. I mean, have you read them? I don't know. No, I... How do you know about them? Then why are they re why are they relevant to you at all? How do you know they're dick jokes if you didn't read them? Exactly. That's what he does. That's what he does. How no, do you no, know you what I you do? Why would you pay does? attention? Yeah, Stop being such it. a worshiper. Tim, Come on, I'm, kid. Tim, I'm really confused by your phone call. Oh yeah, well, I, <laughs> just here he one. <laughs> I'm really trying to get to the bottom of why this bothers you. Tim so called much. the other day. He's probably one of those guys. Oh, man, shot himself today shot in Philadelphia. <laughs> a Philadelphia <laughs> caller to a radio program. <laughs> shot himself once in the head, fatally injured because wow. his lackluster career. Well, so Tim, what kind of uh, what, what now? What kind of a career did you want to have? You said you're having tough times. You offered yeah. that, man. We didn't ask you. Right, no, I know. I just hate how you guys go about the whole radio. Yeah, I know you do. But uh, listen, if you're tough, tough time, hold on, hold on. You hate that. Ask but... me questions. You don't let me talk. Wait, hold on, talk. You're repeating yourself. That's yeah. probably why you didn't make it in entertainment, because you're a redundant, silly boob. Say something interesting and compelling. Here's your opportunity to talk. What is going wrong in your personal life? You mentioned it. Your turn. Go, Tim. No, you guys are throwing so many questions at me at once. Let That's me one question, baby boy. What's going wrong in your personal life? Opie's been throwing the same question at me over and over. What's because I haven't answered it? Wait, because I really want to get to the bottom of it. Yeah. We could beat you I up all day, but too. all right, go ahead, talk, talk, please. I, you know what? Go, Tim. I, your I, turn. I, go. You guys, you guys have this radio show. You guys can reach out to millions of people, and you don't take advantage of it. Yes, we That's do. We have you to call, calling us, Tim. That's what we wanted to do. Wait, I want to hear the guy. What, oh, do you, what do you mean by that? How do we not not take advantage of it, sir? You guys. Do not have any kind of production value for your show on many levels. Yes, we do. <laughs> well, now the guy. All right. Now I got to agree with him. Well, the guy makes a good point there. <laughs> Maybe we should have pushed on. Go ahead. You don't think we? What do we? What do we need as far as production value that would help the show? I sure. really think you guys walk in the studio ten minutes before you go on air. Anthony's brushing off some hangover. I don't care. Whatever. Mm -hmm. 
Opie's doing his own thing. Jimmy's stumbling in from a stand-up show, and you've got morons behind the scenes over there. I really think that you guys could have what a much is, better this show. This guy's got it pegged. Why do you, why you the hell, why do you listen then, Tim? Like, what is, what why is do it you about upset this show that draws you? Yeah, why do you care? If, if you, were, you knew what Jimmy, you were irritated by Jimmy's stand-up voice when he started, and yet you keep yeah. following his career, you know about his books, you listen to this show, it's got low production value, they have no right to make fun of who, why don't you just turn it off? Why are you making yourself so yeah. upset? Hey, all the where time? is Steve C.? Is he on the phone somewhere? <laughs> so, now, is the idiots behind the scenes? <laughs> Why are you such a fanboy, Tim? No, I'm, I, to be honest with you, I was at one point back in WNEW. Right. I have XM in my car. I drive an hour and a half to work every day. I pop you guys on for about 20, 30 minutes. It's a, it's a long time. It's garbage. So turn it's on a some, long time to listen. 20, 30 minutes is a long time to listen to something you don't like. 90, 90 minutes to work, A, get a better job, educate yourself, and, and, and uh, live closer to where you work, you know? If, if you could realize this whole story I've been telling you, I'm going through not the best of times. Well, I asked you I'm to elaborate on that, it. and you didn't elaborate on that. So I have no I'm empathy. Going to. The, uh, elaborate on it now. No, Jim. I'm exactly. No, no. I don't want to elaborate. I don't really care, to be honest with you. Stop listening. Put on the XM Comedy Channel or put on another show. Stop torturing yourself, Timmy boy. I just think it could be so much better. Uh, well, well, we think you could be a better caller or not a douche, but You're it's not hired. working out for us either. <laughs> God. You're not elaborating. You're a radio caller who offered nothing about yourself. What, what, do you want me to write a book about it? Something that you've done twice? Yes, and that you <laughs> couldn't do. What a weird thing. Yes, like I have done that somebody twice. Yeah, you you who like has you written two yeah. best-selling yeah. books twice? What do you want me to do, succeed like mm -hmm. you've done? No, Tim, just keep driving three hours round trip to work and spending an hour a day listening to us like a good boy. The same redundant crap we just yeah, regurgitate every day. Don't you realize we talk about our life's experience here? We don't throw a bunch of fancy production in. We talk about our lives. We talk about our uh, political affiliations. We talk about anything that comes to mind because it's a talk show. It's not a phony show where people put on a voice and do things. Don't you find that slightly refreshing? To some extent, but the fact that you guys could do so much more with that idea, you guys... Can, 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 I, ask you, like, okay, can I ask for one, one, uh, one, one example? What yeah, is, what is one thing that you wish you heard on this show that you don't get to hear? It seems like the show is mailed in on such a consistent basis. You know, forget, no, forget, forget what the show does that bothers yeah. you. There, you said something that was like positive and optimistic, that there are so many things that right. they could be doing. So p just it, it, give me one example of something that I you just, think they could be doing. Well, I just look at the fact that every time a caller calls in, especially a... That's another caller. criticism, you stupid oh, no. douche. Offer an idea. Off, you're being given an opportunity. Have, Offer have, one have, idea. Have, All right, let's hear what he says about the caller thing and, then, right. and then hit him and on then, that. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Back in WNEW, when callers came in, you were receptive towards them. You enjoyed them. A female calls in, you call her out for having a dirty womb within 20 seconds. What? Like, now we've been. Uh, that's nice. the way. That's the way. nicer it. to the female calls. Wait, that's yeah. that's that's, that's the constructive it. idea. We have a that's lot. That's what we can be doing better. Running. We have a lot more females calling the show, and they do have dirty right. wombs. Yeah, of you course guys, they do. And no, every my, womb is dirty. Is, essentially, that's, that's what you had, Tim. Got blood and no, goop in it. Yeah. the callers. You, you've you've been given quite a bit of time that's on this it. show. We've been. I don't. You don't think we're be receptive to callers? That's his. That's it. That would be his contribution to the meeting. You I sound think like we a... need to be more <laughs> receptive to callers. You do. You know what? You Thank sound you, like an awful PD. Yep. Uh, someone that couldn't uh... make it on the air is now telling a successful program, relatively speaking, no, no a successful program, that uh, you have a better idea. To... And your idea is like this it's, vague, it's, washy, yeah. bummer. Be more you... receptive to the calls. We've been receptive to you. Did you uh, work in radio, Tim? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, where? we know that. All right, Doing where? what? Doing what? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to go into that because I'm still trying to be in. I'm not. I'm not, Why I'm not? not going to talk about it. Why oh, not? Real honest just... radio guy. Real, uh, what's the matter? Why, Why don't you just... stop being a wannabe and just just take some charge of your life and say who you are and what you do? Yeah, be stop honest. cowering. Or what even kind of... just speak generally about what area you were in. It's annoying. Should we be less honest on the show like you are? Is that uh, something that's good? Yeah. Or do you like? Do you like the honesty of this program? No, it, that that has nothing. I'm not. I'm not trying to get at that. It's oh. the fact that you guys have you guys reach out to millions of people, 
and I think you're failing at it. I right. really you're look, we're failing, failing at You're calling it. anonymously and cowering without just saying who you are or where you work because you want to give an anonymous criticism. Do you know people you're know like a girl, us? Girl, man. People, people know us pretty intimately based on what we say on this program. So I think we put a lot across. Uh, uh, yeah. when, when, when we talk every day, I think people know me, Opie, fans of the show know us all pretty personally. What are we not doing that we could be doing aside from, you know, the, your phone call? The callers, which empowers you more. Go. Yeah. No, I, I look at if when I compare what you guys are doing now to what you did in WNEW, remember when you guys first got syndicated all over the place? Yeah. Those syndications started falling off very quickly. Because the format of the chain, the format of the show, did a complete 180. No, we everything about it. Our our, our syndications didn't fall off. We Not got at all. Fired. We got fired. We got fired for the church thing. <laughs> you're so That's dumb. when our, you're right. Our syndication <laughs> fell off never very on fast. The radio. <laughs> one day we lost every one of them. You're right. No. That was very no. fast. You're an ill, no. you're, Ill, you're as ill-informed as much as you are cowardly and languishing in anonymity. You like to be anonymous. That's why you're failing, Tim. I don't. You guys, when you came over on XM... You're jealous. And Shh, jealous, baby boy. Here comes the hushing and the baby boy. I, oh. That's what you are, and that's what you're doing. You're a jealous little boy, and you don't even want to say who you are. You want to just call anonymously and... And then go back to your anonymous life until someday you make it in the business. Yeah, I just... No, whatever. You know well, what? You I'm going to work 50 times harder, <laughs> and I'm going to be 50 times more famous than you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and whatever. Right, Rupert. That's good. Rupert you Pupkin. Yeah, we got him on course. the phone. You think like a chick, and you answer like a chick. Do you have a pride and joy card uh, I could have? <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, it's unfortunate that you guys have this great outlet to reach out to tons of people, and you do a bad job. And, but you don't think we're reaching out. You don't think that, that going on every day and discussing our lives... And, and what affects us and the news and all the stuff we talk about on a daily basis without throwing in pre-produced bits that are bought by co uh, companies or having some hack uh, 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 weather guy come on right. and do his wacky stuff. You think what we're doing is not the most or the best we can do. No, uh, but not even close. All right, listen. Not even close. With what, you don't even have hold on, hold on. With, with what Anthony's saying, You're what amazing. radio show do you enjoy listening to? Ah, oh, very good. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's good. Um, besides you guys, are you talking terrestrial or are you talking... Whatever. Uh, what, whatever. What, 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 what do you need show do you to like? We've got to answer carefully. What about, it, there's a radio show based out of Philadelphia, very well produced. Basically, what you guys were in WNEW, the President Steve oh show. Oh my God! Uh, so, okay, so uh, that's, you know your, that's yeah. your show. Tim, no offense, but I can't talk to you anymore. That's Why that, that crap is such hack radio. I can't well, even tell you. It's if you enjoy, you, fun, you just but... enjoy a different listen. Now you lost me, I and I was sort of, that, yeah. I was sort of trying to listen to you and keep an open mind. Those guys are hacks, and I don't understand why Philly eats it up. Okay. But the okay. but the I... but the blue collar beer drinking dudes hate that show. Hate okay. it. I understand. Tim, I'm you so have... you just lost me. I'm oh, so, well, you let me that, that's what that's Aww. what is wrong with radio. That hacky crap. Tim, Tim yells a lot for Tim a caller. Wants air time. And, 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 and granted, they they do very well in the ratings. And for the life of me, I don't understand why. There's no way we'll hacky. ever be like a precedent hacky Steve show. Stuff always never. It is. Never. I'm not asking you. I'm not asking you to be like one. But we're but just I'm in different places, Tim. Now I'm, I'm involved in the conversation. We're in different places. Your taste okay. is so. Uh, it's so much different than than uh, Anthony, myself, Jimmy, and and our listeners. We can't even we can't even agree on that, anything. Does it bother you, Tim, that if you stop listening, you won't be missed, and we certainly won't care? Uh, what does that even mean? No. <laughs> then then why are you listening? Then why do you put yourself through it? Just go away. You can't win oh. this. You can't control it. We've heard you. We don't agree. So go away. Yeah, dude. The President Steve show. There's a. I mean, you know, they never did anything outside Philly. They they never got national attention, never got syndicated. That I don't understand why that show is popular. And I, I'm certainly not going to sit here and try to figure that out. I just know that's not the type of radio I I want to do or or will do. You're jealous. Yeah, You're no. a jealous wannabe, Tim. Wow. No, I'm, if you were to, if you would have said other shows, then I might have been like, all right, you're making good points. But then you had to you throw the press and Steve. Wow. You're jealous. Oh oh oh. From oop, the production oop, value. Oop. Production oop, value. value. Oh, what a Do you understand be. a talk show and pro a production value-based show? is It's two different things. We do a talk show 
where we sit and talk and discuss things. Do we need pchoom pchoom and production <laughs> behind it and some kind of friggin' sounder to, to hold your attention? We love no, sitting in a room and discussing our lives together and, and listeners call and have the uh, opportunity to do the same. What are you talking about this production that we need? Hey, no, I'm saying, I'm saying basic values. Like, hey, you're, we're talking about a U2 song. Well, let's not play it. Let's just talk about it. I have no idea what the hell half this stuff you guys are talking about when you guys are talking about, oh, I like that U2 song. Yeah, me too. Oh, but that other one. Blah, 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 blah. We haven't even talked about the U2 song. Uh, and by the and way, I've been, on the, I've been, on, the show, example, but, I've been yeah. on this show many times, and every time a song comes up, I'm amazed at how quickly I'm, I'm hearing it. I know. It, it happens right away. Up. Like if you bring, you, you just reference something and it comes up, so you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's something you're just, we really you're do reaching. try to do. And by the way, these guys are doing a show. They're doing it the way they want to do. Who owes you a show that you, you want to show just Play the show you love in your own head. Well, it sounds like you no, got the these, show you like. Preston Steve's a listener. Yeah, you've got it. So they're on the them. same time we're on. If these so. guys do a show that other people don't like, then they'll people stop listening and yep. they won't be on the radio, which is happening slowly. But, you know. <laughs> All right. Tim, the bottom line is this. If, if the show wasn't working, what will happen to us is what happened to you. Yeah, it's, it's a so very Darwinist succeed. system. Failed. <laughs> you have failed. Or you, and you're jealous, and you're one of these failures who sits at home and cries like a little baby. Yeah, because the rest of the I world considers it differently. The rest of the world considers it a very binary choice. You turn it on or you turn it off. Mm. Nobody cares. You don't. You don't yeah, you well. sit there and why isn't this the way I like it? Because it's because the, they're not you. They're somebody else doing what they do. So listen to a show you like. Don't listen to this one. Yeah. You have no vote here. What are you, a stockholder? They're on the message boards, too, because you seem to like anonymity since you're not making it in the business. You like to call up anonymously. Go on a message board. I'm sure he make does. Make up a funny name. Of course he, this he does. This guy writes really long oh, comments. Yeah. You want to be heard, really Tim. Really long. And then he takes somebody else's comment and parses it and answers yeah. each part. Yeah. Oh. All right. Uh, Tim, the business going. has rejected you. And, uh, you know, just just go be heard somewhere, silly. I don't think what you're doing right now is going to repair your personal problems. <laughs> we, I think we've, you're taking a huge out of, you know, go just tell her you're sorry instead of doing this. All right, we've entered. Hang up, you. call her, and tell her you Tim, didn't we mean to hit you her go, in right? yeah. Thanks for the right, call. Guys. Best, best, Tim, best of luck. Best of luck, Tim. You just, Frunkus. You just keep listening, kiddo. You yeah. keep listening and being jealous in your car. I think Danny uh, has got the weenie in the in the butt. Uh, it's perfect. We'll end with. Uh, oh yeah, I just saw this last night. I was laughing my ass off. <laughs> Louis, great job today, Orpheum Theater, May uh, March 14th in Boston. Jimmy's going out to San Francisco for Friday, Saturday, Sunday at Cobb's Comedy Club. Oh, but, you have a gig? I <laughs> just thought you were going out to meet yes, friends. Yes, I want to go out there in my chaps and tie my yeah. shoes and see how long it takes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, quick, production! A man in chaps! Quick, get a sound clip! Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, For Tim, because he's still listening, a lot of production value here. Good Check boy. this out. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey, okay, we've got our first contestant. Let's hear Weenie's catchphrase. <clears throat> Dan funny. I think we have a wiener. <laughs> and that's Dickie the Punchline Donkey on 97.1. Dickie the Punchline Donkey on Cool 97.1. Yeah. On the radio and the, the morning. morning FM. Cool. WQHG. Cool in the morning on ninety-seven point one. Ninety-seven point one. What did you get cereal on you? Get a little on you. Yogurt. Yogurt? Where's uh, Louie? I hear him mumbling. Yeah, Is that you? Goes. There you go. He's got some A's on you. You got your uh, laptop out. What are you looking at? Anything good? Oh, no. I just... Something I'm writing, and I have to transcribe some things from another thing to a thing. What is, what is this? It is... I don't know. Oh, I, was, I would say what? Pantera. Oh, it is Pantera? Mouth. God, I was going to go with... Uh... Mouth for War. It's off of uh, Vulgar oh, Display, okay. I do believe. There you go. I like. Instead <laughs> a little uh, rock and roll. Oh, rock and roll. Open Anthony show here on the. Uh, what did Dow do? Potty mouth. All right, side. Dow's moving up a little bit. Is it? Buying opportunity. Yeah, right. Who knows anymore? Yeah, uh, like After I said, yesterday's uh, disaster. Everybody really, uh, it's Wall Street really uh, convinced that things are turning around. I read, I was hearing on the radio once that Warren Buffett is buying stocks, you know, because his, his whole philosophy is, what is it, pay, uh, 
uh, be comfortable when others panic and panic when others are comfortable, oh. something like that. Uh -huh. So, like, he's going, hey, good time to buy everybody. And then two days later, it said Warren Buffett had his worst year ever, and he's really worried. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's, and he's really mad. Yeah. He's usually he's an totally, optimist, but he came out, I think, sign is I think he came out yesterday or the day before or something, and he's more pessimistic, so people are like, oh, fuck. That's bad news. He's not happy. He's, well, he's saying this is going to be a while before this thing turns around. Well, you look at some of the lowest uh, Dow uh, figures we've had since 97, mm -hmm. and then uh, other th companies that uh, are posting all-time lows. You know, big companies, not just. Uh, but you know, the Dow Jones goes up when unemployment goes up. Like ba the country hurting are indicators to buy and stuff. Yeah. So it's like it's N not, not really time, an no. accurate measure of like how most people's lives are going. It's like oh, if the yeah, Dow yeah. goes down, that just means who fucking can buy stock. I mean, out of like real people in the real world. Yeah. Who can really fucking invest well, in stock? I I think what you're supposed to do. Like what? What you're told you're supposed to do yeah. when you get a job is tuck some money away and uh, save it. That's right. like phase one. You get a job. Well, that's the uh, thing is that Americans money. are saving more money now. Like American savings accounts, yeah. are higher than so ever. Petrified to put it right in now. anything else. But that's good. That's that's good. It's like things have been so fucked up for so long. Just exploding credit. Yeah, people having shit they can't even come close to actually like affording to have. And not putting any money in the bank and just living yep. for the for the retarded moment, check to check, you know, you know just fucking from your your ATM card, you de get the money out and stick it right in your asshole and just shoot <laughs> jizz all over your fucking stomach, like just constant flow. Yeah. And now people are going, well, maybe I save, maybe I buy things I need, and that makes the Dow go down because people it are really just is, being yeah. stupid. So that's good. It was too high. The Dow was too fucking high. Twelve thousand was fucking crazy. high. Yeah. <laughs> fucking high. I was talking. To, I was talking to my financial guy. Yeah. And he actually said, and I didn't want to hear this. He goes, "Well, you know, you got that safe in your apartment. I would suggest you put money in it." I'm like, "Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's what your buddy says oh at, at the bar, not your financial advisor." He's like, "I would suggest you put a few uh, dollars in that safe." Yeah. How they get you? I know you're hearing that's stuff great. you never heard before. That yeah, person, yeah. right, right, right. That talking head with the uh, number scrolling under it that you always uh, turn the sound off on. Yeah. Turn it up, and it's just a woman saying, "And s then melt the gold uh, <laughs> and, and <laughs> make a calf unto your god." Yeah. And <laughs> Carry the calf around and kill a virgin. This is the new recommendation from, uh, you know, Merrill Lynch. Yeah, I've never uh, turned up the volume to say, bury your money in the backyard. Yeah, exactly. and, you know, you've never Diamonds needed a are an smelter. excellently portable way <laughs> yes. to portable. escape the country. So true, man. Swallow the diamonds inside of a condom. <laughs> It, it, it really us, has you know. gotten to the point where, uh, yeah, you, you just, should you buy gold and just bury it like yeah. a pirate? But then, see, I'm afraid of doing that because won't, gold is so psychological. The You're idea a gold that it guy. has, I had a, I have some gold coins. You like, money gold. is Actually, more psychological. Those gold coins than... that I bought the, for like, they were like 700 bucks each and it's up to nine, yeah. 990 an ounce right now. There you go. But I'm, I would never put everything in gold because, Gold is this idea that it's worth something, and tomorrow everyone could say gold is bad. But, but, but gold has more realism to it than cash but, does. Yes, it does. That's true. Like, it, it's, it's hard yeah. to believe and really Wait, grasp, but... Yeah. Louis makes a good point, though. If the whole world gets together and goes, you know what? The same worth shit. The gold should not be worth shit, and no. that'll solve all our problems. Mm -hmm. But and the diamonds, diamonds, if that diamonds happens, are, we're in trouble because our whole our, our money is all based on Fort Knox. Right. So if they, the whole world be. goes, we're in deep trouble. What's that? <laughs> it used to be. It's yeah, not like, yeah, like Goldfinger was made. So, it's oh, not not anymore. Yeah, we, they took us off the gold standard years ago. Yes. Yes. Right. Long oh, time yeah. ago. Well, the, oh, the gold in Fort Knox is just a, no. <laughs> what if we what I'll if we find a gold in Fort Knox? Okay, 1960s, Jim. What if we find a big pit of diamonds? And then next thing you know, yeah, but don't you? There's too many diamonds. Don't you know about the diamonds? What the beers? The I the diamond the beers. beers. Is the it beers. the diamonds or the beers? What are you talking the about? Beers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the beers. The beers. Uh, the beers. The diamond the company. Beers. The beers. Yes. I know. Go ahead. They uh, they actually don't have a, a uh, office in America because they're illegal because they're such criminals. <laughs> right. Right. They're Literally, human rights. Uh, they're not is, allowed here. It's just awful. It's not because of that. Their like their practices, like economically, they have. There are way more diamonds than there are like fucking rocks in your 
backyard <laughs> in your dry, gravel driveway. For real? There are way, but the De Beers company hoards them. Like, they use these, like, fucking cartels and armies and stuff and warlords. Really? They, they hoard diamonds. They have an, a, a massive load of diamonds, and they control the price by meeting it out how much they want to. And then every time a competitor starts making diamonds, to they, kill them? they flood the market with diamonds and lower the value of it. Wow. And then but the, aren't then, they then so that company beautiful goes and down. sparkly? Yeah, but they're common. They're not. A, they're fucking <laughs> common. They are. They're not that. And if the, the De Beers company tomorrow could say diamonds are worth fucking mm. Starburst fruit shoes, well, so they don't buy of? those. Yeah, where are they based out of? Uh, my mother's country. Oh, no. oh, Jesus, I don't know. That must be a huge company. You just, you just, <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is, massive. With, with fucking, uh, it's crazy. Uh, good ventilation. No, it's about fifteen uh, big so, vessels, big uh, so uh, the main freight, guy. Freight, uh, the, no, every time you hit a, a gap in my knowledge, I just go to my yeah. mother's country. So the main guy that that the main guy for De Beers on his yeah. way out could just say, you know what, I'm going to fuck everybody. Yeah. Why? I'm leaving this planet. Who gives a shit? Diamonds aren't worth anything tomorrow. Right. Yeah, That's actually right. I just did some uh, research. It says that. Uh, oh. There's more of a man-made shortage about diamonds than there is a natural one. Uh, the distribution of uh, the number of diamonds put on the market each year is very regulated, and uh, there are enough diamonds to give each man, woman, and child in the U.S. a whole cupful. Yes, a whole oh, cupful. A cupful of diamonds. Wow, in two the countries, one cup. <laughs> Here those ribs, you. What the fuck? I didn't know that. I thought yeah. that was a. I saw it on rare... 60 Minutes. It's kind of like uh, OPEC. So, yeah. you know, no, they take is. the oil and say, well, we're just not going to pump m as much Except out. Except for oil is a resource that's used by the. Right. By the yeah, yeah. The, the Supply and demand, my friend. Supply gallons. and demand. Yeah. Diamonds. If you are. They're a girl's were... best friend, I hear. Well, yeah, because girls are cunts and they don't care who dies for their <laughs> fucking sparkles. <laughs> yes. That's, that's, actually, that's actually too long for the slogan, but I like, <laughs> I like that that's that's little slug line. That's nice. Yeah, that's... De Beers. Yeah, Tiffany, uh, <laughs> Tiffany <laughs> should use that one. <laughs> Tiffany's. Uh, All right. Wow, that Danny, I learned something today. I had no yeah, idea. It's, yeah. a, it's a horse shit thing. education. Mm -hmm. Can you check where they're based out of, Danny? I, I would love to know. I'll mention the guy who runs it. Who runs that company? I don't know. It's How a fucking family. powerful is that? Hitler. Hitler. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's Ted De Beers. Ted De Beers. <laughs> Ted De Beers. <laughs> Just one diamond, I think, though. Yeah, a one year. diamond a year, and you got a couple over. of diamonds for every man, woman, and child. <laughs> oh, a cup made of diamonds. Diamonds. <laughs> diamond hats. It's a funny diamond visual. Hats. Diamond tires. <laughs> that doesn't make me feel good. <laughs> Headquarters are in uh, South that, Africa. For I'm the sorry, I, I knew that. Jesus. South I, I started to think I should put my money in diamonds. You know. Yeah. No, you like can't do. there's nothing yeah. safe. There's nothing. nothing. Money isn't a thing. Right. Grow a garden. That's well, all you can really do. Well, my financial advisor shouldn't say so have food put it in it. your safe, though. Yeah. I was hoping you know that he could though? figure something a little they, better than that. No, I was watching. I, I, I was watching one of those financial shows, and they're all talking this round table. Yeah. And they're going, "Well, this is," and they're just knocking down everything. Oh, how about GE? Not so good. And I can <laughs> just keep knocking <laughs> them all down. Could and take then a while. Finally, the guy goes to the big expert. What's the thing then? And the guy goes, uh, "Stick it uh, some cash in your mattress." And everybody laughed. And then when her. Really? He was and serious. He goes, he goes, no, stick cash in your mattress. Like, they weren't kidding. Oh. And they all looked kind of pale as they went to the credits. Like, oh, my God, we actually just said that. We're That's real that, advice. And, and We're it was real point. advice. Yeah. The, the uh, financial advisor would always tell you, don't put money in the bank when there's low interest because you'll have the money in the bank, but the interest rate will not um, outweigh the cost of living increase right. over the years. So you're actually losing money. Having it in that bank, well, and, and I, I would always sit there and go, and "Stuff that are offsetting." Well, any... no, you know what it is though. If if you have a lot of money in a yeah. in a bank account, they have like where you don't pay a fee. Right, right. So I'm sitting there and and I couldn't grasp it. I'm going, you know, I understand what you're saying. Like if I'm making one percent on my money because the interest right. rate's so low, but if I have X amount of dollars in the bank, yeah, uh, in a month from now, I'm going to have X amount plus one percent, not down $18,000 because yeah, yeah, the fucking is... stock dropped. I don't care if it doesn't outweigh the cost of living. No, exactly. I'll deal with that. I just want to know well, that I'm going to have what... I, I don't need that much. 
Just tell me I'm going to have what I started here's, with. Here's, Remember, here's what when, I don't get though. Like uh, when money, sorry, when when like with inflation, like that idea that you take a truck. Like there was a time in our country where you needed a wheelbarrow of money to buy a loaf of bread. That whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but if those people, those dollar bills that they had in that wheelbarrow, if they held on to them, and yeah, then when things mm-hmm. got good, isn't that now just worth a while. Now money? it's worth the that bunch. million dollars you spent on a loaf of bread. <laughs> yeah, just and, wait. Don't buy the bread with it. Yeah, steal the off. bread like a man. <laughs> I remember Hold our financial. And then you'll have a million dollars. Yes. I remember our financial advisor because and I had the same guy. He he actually bragged to me. He goes, "Well, uh, I'm losing less than the other guys, so that's why you should continue with me." Wow. And I'm like, that that was his pitch though, because it got so weird out there. It's like, no, you still want your money in these investments, and you want it with me because I'm certainly losing less than the other guys. I'm using wow. mine to put and, equity and as a in consumer, my home. I'm like, what? Well, that doesn't make me feel good. No. I, I don't know. My paid... my accountant called me like after the biggest uh, crash October, day, November, yeah, and he said, uh, "You're the only person I got good news for because uh, <laughs> you don't have any fucking money." <laughs> you're bro. He said, "You're the only client I have who lost nothing." He today. called you to make himself feel <laughs> yeah, better. Exactly. <laughs> because I had no. Yeah, it's such I had a nothing. rough day. He's like, "Who on this yeah, list is exactly?" I could call to you. Don't, you call don't. You just. Up. You really don't know what to do uh, with your with your cash. No, I just put it in. Uh, like I said, I. I I put it in my home equity. I just paid the mortgage. Fuck, what else can you do? It's like, I'm sick of paying the that's bank interest. Deal. See, and then, the and then I go, yeah, because yeah, that's the other thing people say, the one thing that's, you know, uh, that land is perfect because there's always more people, there's never more land. Yeah. And, blah, but blah, then blah, I blah. think, no, but then there's going to be the revolution, and yeah, the brown course. people are going to say, you don't steal my land. I don't care what your lease says. <laughs> I don't care what your title says. <laughs> I that's why you need to head. buy guns. <laughs> one of the, <laughs> one of the, <laughs> you need to buy a gun guns and, some and land. One of the solutions to the, the woes out there, the economic woes, is a situation. <laughs> is what? A situation. Less people. Ah, it's situ- oh, plague or something. Some kind of situation will um, well, you know, we make, are a, reaching make things a lot better. Of, we're well, reaching some kind of limits here. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Not, there's just not... You know, the thing is, it's another reason, again, why it's good that this shit's happening. <laughs> because you can't keep getting more... This w- idea of wealth that's not based on, hey, we just found more stuff in America and we're yeah. selling it to other places. Right. It's just we're selling each other experience and orgasms <laughs> and just trade money to the point where there's just money that's not based in anything. It's not based on some gold. Yeah. It's not based on that we're carting more fucking oats mm-hmm. to China. It's this... We're selling our debt to China. That's our big... You know that thing that people say now that that's our biggest export. Is debt debt? Did you know sure. that? Yeah, yeah. That out out strips by far any cars we make or any steel. Yeah, we sell in debt. debt. It's the biggest thing that we sell is buy some of our debt, and now we owe you the money instead of to we to owe you Bank money of America plus. Yeah, so that's plus interest. Why wouldn't that crumble? Why wouldn't that stop and go like? Well, there's not more because we have atom bombs. <laughs> Like that's what I mean. No, I know, but we inside, have atom but bombs. it's not going to be an invasion. It's an implosion. It's just that we don't have the fucking resources or the or even the education. No, or I think knowledge eventually or the we're, talents or the wherewithal. Uh, wherewithal. The wherewithal. Jimmy. Uh, I think you. eventually we'll just say we're not paying you back, and then if you argue with it, we will just drop no, huge bombs on you. That's fine, but we don't have anything that. to give each other anymore. We right. don't have anything. At some point, you tap. Come out. up with a widget. It's just widgets. They're just yeah. fake things. Just another. We're just trading widgets for yeah. paper. Yep. For imaginary things that are worth little fucking little things on no, an I abacus. I remember <laughs> I was in Arizona once and I stopped at a gas station that's also a Nathan's Hot Dogs in the subway. <laughs> yeah. Wow, in Arizona. Subway, yeah. Dunkin' Donuts, yeah. uh, Baskin Robbins, yeah, 7-Eleven nice. store. And this this pasty, skinny, malformed, white American kid with, like, chunks out of his hair. Like, he did it, just cut his own hair like he was brushing it in the morning yeah. just to keep the length down. <laughs> you know, I just pictured him looking in the mirror, half asleep, like, literally just using scissors like they're a comb. Yeah. And then he's, so he's selling a, a fucking Subway sandwich to a dude that's him. Just, yeah, there's no guy. difference between the two guys. He made it for him. They're just both sleepy. Uh, can you put onions on it? And he goes, yeah, these onions? Yeah, okay. 
And then at some, I looked at them. I'm like, why don't you just eat it? Who cares which <laughs> one he eats it? <laughs> Who cares which one he eats it? <laughs> Nothing really. Like, the so exchange there. Oh, yeah, that's right. great. We're just, yeah, we're just these brilliant. people looking at each other, glassy eyed, making consumer choices to each other. Yeah. Yeah. One guy's getting paid, and one guy's eating the thing. But who? What's yeah. the fucking difference? What, what amazes me is what the the world is drastically changing, and 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 Bush. Mm -hmm. This was all happening. And what? Yeah. How did Bush skate? This I know. This How was all ready to happen, and and it, and he was just skating to the end of his presidency. Yeah. Did they see it though? Because really the whole did. world economy, and the guys yeah, in London, they the had world to have seen no, they did. The signs, man. They did because all this, the seeds for this were planted a long time ago, and people get just kept pushing off. He the just idea didn't want on his watch. He, he didn't just want wanted to get to the it. end of it. There's a great story in NPR that tells the entire story, like from fucking front to finish. It was this long, long thing they played. Right. Of course, it's I'm NPR. Not fascinating <laughs> how far back it went. I'm not blaming yeah. Bush, by the way. It was this was obviously He's, all just developing while yeah. he was in office. Well, Clinton didn't all. help either. Sure, Clinton was another just fucking, fucking Reagan man. But it finally, <laughs> but I guess what I'm trying to say is it was coming to a breaking point, and he was yeah. like, huh, "Not on my watch, man. No, get Obama in there and let him deal with this yeah. shit. Is Where's it, my helicopter? I'm out. Yep. Is it a bad time? Investments now. It's like what. What do you buy into? Like, I, I invested, uh, there's a company, and what they do is they, they go to people's homes. <laughs> Sorry, Jimmy. And yeah. uh, they, they, it, they do oil paintings mm -hmm. of you and your family, and the paintings are about $8,000. <laughs> and uh, wow. this company is like $300 a share. And I think that in an economic crisis, people want oil paintings <laughs> of themselves for their families. <laughs> and going, what a to, wise investment. Commission during these tough to, times. To come and paint oil paintings of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know what? There is a story about this painter I saw on some, I think it was on 60 Minutes, this guy who's an American painter, and he paints just shitty landscapes like you see like in a hotel lobby. Yeah. But he became hot as a painter. Like, people just really dig him. This is, to me, like a great example of what is wrong with the whole fucking <laughs> world country, really. And he paints these shitty landscapes. And they're so hot that he just makes prints of them. Like, they're just oh, yeah, reproductions. Yeah. But then he adds a couple of dabs of paint to the print to make it original Holy and then signs his name and they and, and crazy Americans buy these for like thirty thousand dollars and then wow. they trade them like they're a big hot it's like a hobby to buy his paintings. but people like mortgage their homes to buy his paintings they get obsessed so they showed him he flies into Houston they fl in a private jet and goes to this big hall and it looks like a est meeting or something it's, yeah. it's thousands of people like he's god and he and he's got a headset you know like uh, garth brooks like he's he, he's kind of like a garth brooksy cowboyish kind of guy i'm a painter man watch this shit <laughs> and they have all his paintings up on stage and he's signing them like super fast and the, some an assistant is just taking one away and he signs it takes another one away and he wow. signs it and he says everyone i sign is worth another ten thousand dollars and he signs and people are standing and applauding oh my god the, the uh that he's that he's just that he's just sparse. printing money people are so excited that he's rich and that they're giving him money. He must be like, uh, is it's he from a pla crazy. another planet? Does he have hypnotic uh, like powers? He's just got that drive. He's got that thing that people like more than anything that somebody's successful and rich. They're so excited that somebody's rich. You know? I, I'd love to be like one of those people that can just go in front of a stadium and just talk about how great you are. And have people just be like, yes, yes, and they throw, yeah. they're so excited and, and, that somebody's throwing it off. money. And it's usually some religious thing, you know. Yeah. I gotta get a cult. It's a lot. There's there is a comedian in the world who succeeded that way. <laughs> oh, that well, the thing that the yes. number one thing people love about that comedian is how successful he is. Like if you if you look at people right. writing about him, uh -huh. the first thing they say is, look how many of these he's sold, and look how good. Yeah, the, the the germ of like what he actually does that's arbitrary. He's but a like, success story. Yeah. Look how many friends he has on this thing and look how much. Look at Tony Robbins. For years, yeah. he was like fucking the lurch of, uh, <laughs> the lurch <laughs> of, <laughs> of, of being uh, uh, amazing. Yeah. And he'd get out there and just tell people how to, how to make it. Yeah. And yeah. They, were, they were fucking like falling down crying watching yeah. this guy. How the fuck do you pull that mm. off? And, and a small mm. percentage of those people will ever make it. Oh, even though please. they buy right into his concept. No, uh, it's Thomas amazing. Kincaid? None of them. What? Thomas Kincaid, the painter. 
That's I think that's his name. No, it's Ruben Ruben Kincaid. Ruben. <laughs> yes. that was no, the, Ruben's uh, his agent. Is his brother? Oh, right. is it? Yes. Yeah. Thomas is. Uh, is Once the he got rid, rid of that that pain in the ass redheaded boy. <laughs> yes, he was able to concentrate on his brother's <laughs> career. Fucking pedophile. <laughs> He's chasing after that little redheaded boy. How about this though? You know, you guys are poking fun, but uh, it, it's oh. a time now where you can you can invest. Um, mm, and yeah. I actually I I'm not on the I got on the ground floor. A few shares, yeah. Um. But it's a company that makes it's 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 a combination hat, uh, AM FM radio, and I I think that yes. in times like this people Yay. like to walk what around. What does it say yeah. anything on the hat? Does it say anything on the hat? Like don't, AM don't bother on, me. AM on or something. AM on one side, FM on the other. That's it. And there's speakers on the inside of the hat, and they aim towards your ears, and you can play it very very loud. And I just think people like that these it's days. It's amazing. I yeah. I believe I saw that somewhere. There's a big heavy metal <laughs> yes. dial on the front. Sounds good. Sounds good. You, yeah. you have an obsession with hats. Jim, How do you not? They go the on way. your head. <laughs> <laughs> How do you not? My 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 dream. <laughs> they keep my, you warm and dry. My zenith in life is to make a hat bowling ball combination <laughs> <laughs> that you can <laughs> you can bowl your hat and then wear it home. This is Jimmy's Hat Museum. Jimmy just gives up comedy, moves out to New Mexico. And on one of these like highways that you mm -hmm. have to drive through, mm -hmm. he has just Jimmy's Hat Museum, and it's all his bowling ball and diamond hats and everything. My dream is to be rich enough to have a, make to people wear porcelain hats on my ranch, <laughs> and then every year we have the famous "How much diarrhea shit can you hold in your hat?" contest. <laughs> diarrhea <laughs> shit, like, like everyone stands there with their porcelain hat. Diarrhea shit. Yeah, because it's just, diarrhea. Just, that way you oh. can't move your fucking head, or it will spill, and you'll lose points. <laughs> And the winner gets a bag of oranges. <laughs> bag of oranges for the winner. <laughs> diarrhea shit, like the, the solid part of the oh diarrhea, God, like <laughs> with the water sifted out. Yeah, taken out. Oh, there's a there 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 possibility. Let's go to Matt. It out. Ah, like diarrhea pulp. About that. Let's go to Matt in North Carolina. <laughs> Matt. Oh, I have to change it. I stole that from the office. Yes, you I, did. I, didn't, I actually didn't mean to. I remember that. I have to change that. that. Yeah. I have to change that. Uh, Matt, what do you got? Damn it. That show that Louie's talking about. Is on uh, NPR. It's called the Giant Pool of Money. That's what it is. The hell is that thank about? you. I know it's the show you're referencing. Amazing. Th thank you, Matt. What it is is that there's this thing called the Giant Pool of Money. Right. It's all the money in the world that's right. in a bank, basically. Right. That it's a, a lot of it is Chinese. <laughs> like a huge <laughs> amount of it is Chinese. Yeah. And they, like that's the money that fuels. Uh, um, Investments and uh, saving and and uh, uh, credit. That's where credit comes from. And um, in China, they were making so much money with their booming economy that their giant, their part of the giant pool of money became really huge. And there's all these people that invest that giant pool of money to make it grow. Their yeah. obsession is to make it bigger and bigger. So there was too much Chinese money, and they ran out of investments. Like America's a great place to come and invest in shit. They ran out of investments, and their favorite one was these mortgages. Where people, this is how all this shit started. Yeah. So they started going to mortgage companies and saying, "We want, we want in more. We want more. You know, go give away more money for us to loan out." And yeah. the mortgage companies went, "We just don't have any more qualified uh, uh, lenders." Fuck That's qualified. Good. Yes. Uh, just go get us more money. So yeah. they lowered the standards a little bit, and then they fuck go to Congress and and juice up those people and get them to lower the standards wow. legally, and then they stay way, way close to the limits. And then they find a way to take some, like, there's a few fucked up loans, but they bundle them with good loans. Yeah. And then they sell them. So you're selling a package that has an average uh, default risk of whatever, 10 or whatever it is. Mm. But there's like a couple of ones in there. <laughs> and then there's a bunch of 20s. But it's a 10, so it's okay. So you start averaging out and bundling. And, bu and this NPR show, Giant Pool of Money NPR, you could probably Google it and find it. Uh, they they talk to people that, like this bartender in Portland. He was a bartender. And, and one of his customers, he dr served drinks to once a day, said, hey, man, I can't, I don't have enough people in my office to give away these loans. Do you want to just come work for me? And like three months later, that bartender has a Porsche and a mansion just because he's just bundling shit loans oh, with good loans. Wow. And then selling them to somebody who then bundles those averages and averages even more to the point where nobody knows. No, And now no one can untangle the bad from the good loans. Yeah, yeah. And after a while, they're giving people loans and they say, like, how much m money do you make a year? And the guy goes, uh, 20, uh, say 30. 30,000. Okay, can you prove that you make that? Uh, no, it, it, it's okay. 
<laughs> yeah, wait, 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 give me a phone bill. Right. They <laughs> they get they get a fax like every day saying these are the new standards for loans. And it would say like here's how much the person has to earn and here's how provable it has to be. Yeah. Here's how wow. much you have to be able to prove that he earns that. You need this much proof. You need a, a tax return. You need, uh, you know, uh, to call the employee and then go check out their thing. And that went down to, you don't have to call the employee anymore. You just need a tax return. Well, you can use an old tax return. Yeah, we it don't care. It has to be two years old. It has to be three years old. And then finally, somebody started getting faxes that said, uh, verification of income. Don't need it. <laughs> don't, literally don't to buy a it. house. If they like, say nah. they make, all they have to do is say they that's make this it. much. Wow. And then, and so that's when how did this bad burst? Because I had trouble getting a loan. My credit was kind of like, you know, for comics. It's weird. I guess about three years ago, I, w I was only able to get one through one place. Um, you had like a couple outstanding phone bills. Like bullshit will ruin your credit. So when did this happen? Well, I you trouble. remember it was after I bought ago, too. We, was we bought right at the height of the price uh, of the fucking real estate price. Well, a few years ago, about, there was like a credit crisis, but nobody, it didn't touch anybody yet, so nobody paid attention. That's where the, there was like a huge earth tremor financially <laughs> that happened a bunch of times, and nobody did anything. Oh, nobody yeah. went and did anything about it, and it just it corroded and corroded, they and then all of a sudden, so all of that money, though, that was what was fueling like AIG insurance companies, Yeah. and the thing that people don't understand is that an insurance company doesn't just sell insurance and then get the money. They, they take the money that they make on insurance and they invest in these loans and they invest every that money, those loans were such good money and such a good payback that everybody that's why companies that have nothing to do with it. Everyone credit, wanted a piece of yeah, the Yeah, they're, they're the, all the, folding. Yeah. God, you just explain it way better than anybody on fucking well, TV in the last thing. three or four that's months. That's why nobody should watch this shit. That's right. All of it, the liberal and I feel the like conservative. I understand it more. Fox News, CNN, all those people—they they they, they, love this they don't shit. tell you nothing right. because they know you won't keep listening if you just just fucking take a breath and calm down and put on NPR. Just fucking turn on turn off your Twitter. <laughs> just fucking listen for ten minutes and you'll completely understand. I think everybody was under the impression that uh, you went to the bank, you got a yeah. loan, yeah. the bank took its money. Gave it to you. Mm -hmm. You bought what you wanted, and then paid the bank back right. with interest. Right. And then, if you defaulted, the bank took your house, sold it, or whatever. End of story. If you paid it, then you paid it, and the bank had other people do this. People were not under the impression that the bank would then take a bunch of their loans that they made and sell them off. Yeah, no, that's why when you pay your loan, a, a lot of times when you're paying off your mortgage, it keeps changing. It company. keeps changing, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, wait a minute. they're selling your credit to this somebody wasn't, else. This wasn't, this isn't the, it happened to me. I saw that. I and was like, wait, this wasn't the away. mortgage company I started with. Oh, that's yeah. Right. And it's getting further and further away from the person that actually loaned you the money. Right. And it's obscuring how much of a risk you were when you... Yeah, because what, what, what are they checking the records of everybody? No. Back, back, who's... It? Is this... Uh, we'll buy up this loan, but I want to know who it is. Who, no. Of they're they're looking here's at an package. average number. The of average, package. right. There's a shitload of people in here, and the average is this percent. Okay, we don't care who's no, in there. No, and there are still banks in America that are small neighborhood banks that literally they they balance how their community is doing and they actually know who they're loaning to. Yeah, but those that are the ones that all of a sudden the doors shut and you can't get your money out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those yeah. are like, oh, wait a minute, look, so no, is Bob's it's bank. In, it's in his cab and it's in yeah. his house. No, your money's not here. Like not no, actually, actually it's here in a vault. Wait, how is? Uh, let me ask you, how mm. is uh, this selling of loans legal? Like, I, I, I mean, the bundling. It's legal what the it's fuck is it? It's legal because it's lucrative, and people with money have the ear of the fucking politicians to make the laws. That's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. That's entirely why. It's it's so funny to me because, um, fucking Bobby Jindal was that guy that talked after the president. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, Name Bobby Chindle for the other side. Yeah, the Republican, oh, right, right, Republican, right, right. Republican yeah, response. Oh, Joe Goga. They, these I, guys, I they always crap. say these two things. They say we've got to let, we've got to let people, we've got to deregulate everything and let get off of America's backs. And then two seconds later, they go and we've got to punish those people <laughs> that uh, <laughs> they did all these terrible things. Yeah. That's, that's why they did them because there was no regulation. You fucking <laughs> dude, you dummy. But the no, because Americans can do anything. Which the, the, yeah. based on that phrase, they just they fuck people. They they take their shit away. Yeah, and oh, let that's... banks take their shit away. Poor Obama. 
You know, get poor this, Obama. You're going to get this shit turned around. Uh, well, you need, you know, look, the way I look at it is like you can't, I mean, we can't win all the time. We're going to have a hard time. Sure. So you need a president who knows how to, I ha- think he's going to be better at being president during a hard time. I think people are looking at the, expe- I have different expectations. Pally's I don't some think good he's going to keep us at this crazy, unsustainable level of consumer happiness. We're going to shit the bed, but I'd rather have him president when we're shitting the oh, bed. Oh, believe me, so would I. Than some fucking <laughs> red cheek. Republican that doesn't give a fuck wow. about hurting people. How come I have the same uh, uh, opinion uh, on that, that as you do? I, I want to have this guy in office when everything comes falling yeah. down. For, for then in reasons. four years, he'll be like, yeah. fuck this yeah. guy. For totally different Mr. reasons. Mr. Scapegoat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Isn't it convenient that they got the first yeah. black guy in when it's the worst, the worst time. The economy the ever, is, ever? <laughs> Americans are like Yankees fans. <laughs> The New York Yankees, yeah, when they, like true. I liked the Yankees in '94. That, that, I that did too. Era, because <laughs> shut up, <laughs> fucking liar. <laughs> that they, they they built a team and then they won a bunch of World Series with these like storied guys. Yeah. But the way that you should let it go is then they then the guys get old and they retire and new young guys come up and the team and is new and up. awkward. So you take a back seat. You become number two or three for a while and then you get to watch that team build. Organically yeah, and become it's, winners it's again. Cool. That's yeah. what I love. But about. Yankee fans go, no, we're oh, yeah. we're the champs. So they go and they spend all this fucking money. They let all their young talent go and spend money on these steroid pump retards <laughs> that 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 cost billions of dollars, and they lose. They why are we losing? Because you have no fucking patience. Because you couldn't take one year off. Don't yeah. blame the you fans. You want to be number one every year. You can't go number two for one year yeah. in order to stage a no- number one comeback. You can't handle it. And that's what Americans are like. Like, we're no, maybe we were not number one for a little while. <laughs> Let's go make some more shit. You and then come back and sell it and be number one again. Going with your sports thing, too. I love perfect, I love the coaches yeah. and the managers that get, you know, they win the championship. Next year, they're having a mediocre season. So yeah. they get rid of the guy that gave him a championship a mere <laughs> exactly. year ago. He's an idiot. It's like, what the fuck is that always about? Win? I miss that about sports. I, I, yeah. I grew up a Mets fan. And, yeah, we went through those years where we were building. But you felt it. You felt the yes. momentum. You felt like you were heading somewhere. Yes. And then, you know, sometimes you do get the payoff and you win mm-hmm. the World Series. And then you, it's so interesting and so satisfying. And you really get to know the guys yeah. and all that crap. And you know what went into getting there. And now you're just, like, rooting for... Rooting what are for you rooting what? for? Yeah, rooting for... for, for Bunch of money. Dude, I'm an Islander fan. It doesn't fan. even do any good. I'm an Islander fan, which worst team in hockey. Yeah, mm-hmm. every year it's a completely different team. Like yes. I, I, I don't, I, I, I can't even keep up with these guys. Mm-hmm. They're trading and making deals left and right, and, and it's like that with every sports team now. No, there was a time. But that's when a great Lou, analogy as far as America goes. There was a time when Lou Gehrig was uh, the new young guy. Let's see what he can do. Sure. And he was following on the footsteps of you know Babe Ruth was still around. Well, there was a legendary guy. Mm. That's why Lou. Uh, Set the bench. Yeah, and that exactly. guy got injured. I forget his name. Yeah, I and then he he got injured. Lou had a, a great game, and then next thing you know, he sets the record for consecutive games. That's the way it used to be. But now it would be Babe is uh, uh, retiring, so let's buy a guy just like him. Right. Pay him a disgusting amount of money and put him there. Right. Regardless of sacrificing kind of... pitching and everything yeah, else. Exactly. And then lose, and then everybody go, what up? And so right. fire the manager. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just make it work. Such a joke. You know what I think Americans need to chip us all up? I really What's do. That? What do we need? Hula hoops. <laughs> I think the hula hoop was something that just made people feel good and It was alive. a very fun, innocent time in our nation, the hula hoop uh, days. Made pogo sticks. I had a hula yeah. hoop, they sucked. Did Only you really? Does well, like, anybody I say that hula hoops, hula hoops suck? I can never work a hula hoop. They, they were hoop. fun for the first, hoops. like, 30 seconds, and then you're no. like, ugh. I can never make my hips move the right way. We used to throw them at each other. They're for girls. That's why girls got those hips. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. We we used to make them into weapons. That's all. Mm. Like, what else are you going to do with it? You put it around a kid's neck, and you pull. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> what, yeah, yeah, that's that. what I go to my daughter's school, and I, like, chaperone lunch and recess sometimes. Yeah. And the kids, that's what they do with hula hoops. Is like a kid puts it around a kid's neck, literally, and runs in the other way, direction. That's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Fucking brutal. Fucking kids, man. And then you see the other kid, like, sitting on the floor, like, grabbing his neck. And he doesn't know, like, you know, as a grown-up, you know, well, i got to go see a yeah. chiropractor. Lord of the Flies. Why don't we, uh, why don't we take a quick, uh, quick break, and we'll continue. That uh, Dow is trying to stay up today, but it's... it's uh, 68. Up. It was 68. Now it's down to 52. This thing is going <laughs> down again today. Sanity. Good. This is going down again today. Good. Opie and Anthony. Louis C.K., uh, March 14th, Orpheum Theater. Orpheum, Boston. Boston, baby. Ah, hanging with Louis C.K. today. Opie and Anthony. 
Louie's a fascinating da, da, guy, da, man. He really da, is. Da, da. A lot going on in that head. We both had the exact same thought, except yours went into fascinating guy, and mine went to douchebag. <laughs> uh, start with Louis Izzo. That's parallel thinking, Jim. <laughs> that is parallel. Uh, just, yeah, Louis is a very interesting dude, man. Always yeah, there's a lot going on. A very knowledgeable fellow. Yeah. Well, you're a good in. talker. Look like, fake. Me and Louie walking <laughs> I'm around. I'm a fraud. I'm a fraud, okay? I'm fake a fraud. fraud we were walking around Montreal <laughs> doing the festival like 2003 or whatever, and you were just telling stories, and it was, it was most people I can't listen to for more than five seconds. Yeah. But you're a very interesting guy to listen to. And then we got some hand jobs. Yeah, from each other, <laughs> yeah. which was amazing. We pretended yeah. they were other people, so we're not faggots. <laughs> There was a place in Montreal. <laughs> it came on my wrist and left. Just left me hanging. Your wrist. a big joke. I know. Just a big joke. <laughs> Not even a good fucking No, it was awful. Push. Come down like lava. There was places I was cupping in... his red balls, and all of a sudden, <laughs> fucking all over my wrist. I was like, come on, Lou, that's my watch hand. <laughs> there were some places in Montreal that were like, uh, you know, it says model upstairs, that kind of thing. Yeah. Up. And there, there's, they don't quite have sex with you, and there's all these weird ways... And there was one where there's like a, a like a a, oh. a plexiglass body that you step into, like it's sort of a hollowed out. You have to step into this yeah. plastic thing, and then your dick goes what? into this. And the woman jacks off the plastic that's over your dick. That is and, fucked up. And it's your hard dick, plastic. And your dick is yeah, it's hard plastic. It's not like a like a rubber. It's hard plastic. So you're getting and no she, sensation. No, your dick is inside of like a, a plexiglass. Giant, much bigger dick that she's like licking and stuff. How do you get your sensation? Well, you get excited by the fact that there's been fifty dicks in that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that and that you're you're actually like your dick is smushed against some pubic hair of some fucking. So it French looks Canadian like. Guy. So it's supposed to look like like she's you're getting, getting dick. some kind of fucking blowjob. And your and face stuff. goes inside of another face. It's that's the most. It's the creepiest thing I've ever so seen you're supposed, in my life. So, so you're supposed to and, that, and that's supposed to like get you off or yeah. You wouldn't come though. Well, you'd need some kind of a jerk off. physical stimulation. Yeah, you can't get. You couldn't. You couldn't get. Like, yeah, I remember jerk standing there with. I remember standing there with this thing the with this woman that? going, "What do I? How, what do yeah, I? Yeah, what do I do? And I need the like, instructions." She sort of shrugs, like, "I don't know. Do it or don't." <laughs> Fuck out of my fucking <laughs> studio. <laughs> yeah, like, do do gonna, it or don't. don't pick this apart. Some other loser will be in here yeah, if you're not. Fuck you. What do you want me to sell you on this? I fucking want to, I already want to kill myself. You like the hand solo carbonite freezing? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what it looked like. <laughs> I thought you just like pressed the front in there. Yes. Yeah, but not just, as hot as that. <laughs> you dick in there. That's exactly what did you just lay like. your, was it, was it a hard on dick? Or, or was it think, molded I as a limp was dick a, or half mass? I don't remember. I don't remember that. Cause, it cause, had to be hard. Had to be. Did it? Sure, because how else? You know what? I don't think it was like really like a dick shape. It was just a, a kind of just a, a bulging, tube. bulging tube. Just, yeah. Why would you put your dick in there? You know, everyone else is jizzing in there. Because it's fucking. Because you want to get some pussy. It's hot man. It's cause hot. Because you're getting pussy. Sexy. Only there's plastic in between oh. you. <laughs> I thought That's... I've heard like every time a peep show and. Oh. Thing where you go in and get some kind of thing, but that I've never heard of. It's terrible. It's bizarre. Yeah. That's hilarious. Jimmy, you've, you've actually, heard yeah. of that, and you. I was with Louie. Oh, you we were, were together. Oh, you yeah, were together. Yeah. I, that I, think, okay. I think I jacked off in the in one of the movie booths, but that was so annoying to me. Was it like a little spit valve, like on a trumpet on the bottom of the <laughs> pocket, <laughs> where oh, just God. jizz comes out? Oh, <laughs> Done. God. <laughs> <laughs> God. They have spit valves on trumpets. Yes, they have spit valves on a lot of woodwind instruments oh. and brass. And <laughs> I'm thirsty. Can I drink out of that? <laughs> Spit valve. Wow. Yeah, it was like, let me clean my spit valve. And then they press it and go, Foo! and then spit would come firing out yeah, like a smell. trumpet and a, a trombone, oh. things like that. Your brass, I, I think, has just, a spit sorry, valve. The boat that they found. Yes. You know, I love the description of uh, Survivor found two NFL players, one other man. Yeah. Still yes. missing. Is there Who's three men shit missing? He does that? I'm other it's, man. It's three human beings, you Yeah, asshole. as long as you're saying what two of them do for a living. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. We what, they, they, they want you to care a little more. Yeah, like, exactly. What does the other guy do? Well, oh, I watch the NFL. Fucking so relief fuck. worker or some shit. We really do put Actually, priorities a, on people. He was a failure. He played college football, but didn't make it into yeah. the NFL. So because he didn't make the cut, he's other man. They're all pals from college that played, and this guy played. Wow. Wasn't good enough for the NFL, so now he's just well, other man. That's what the survivor was. 
The survivor. No, no, no. There was two non-players. Oh, okay. Miles. One survived. Uh, the NFL oh players are missing. God. Two NFL players, one other man still missing. It could just say two NFL players, one white man That's still so missing. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> that is a small fucking boat for 50 miles out. That's stupid. That's their first. So mistake. they went out in. They want to go. They for went some too big far fish. in that thing. Yeah. Yeah. They uh, stay close to shore. You could get a lot of good fishing in, but you know you're not. Can you're not someone gonna get the big just stuff. turn the boat right side up now? <laughs> They're probably not. underneath the boat. Yeah, nobody's bothered. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a uh, minute. Maybe we should look under the boat. There he is. is. No, they were all alive at 2 a.m., the guy said. Yeah. They were all together. Look, look at, at that, though. Waves. Like, try to hold on to that boat. You can't boat. hold on to that boat like that. The it's... bottom is slick. No, my dad, I, I bought this shitty uh, power boat in upstate New York a couple of summers ago mm. and it was a huge waste of money but I bought it from this guy and it had like the, the back of it was cracking <laughs> I mean it was just the dumbest thing but I bought it because we the, where I was upstate then we were uh, on the Hudson River so I, I had this weird idea to take the boat to New York City from Hudson, New York hey, it's, it's connected 120 miles up and I called my dad who we don't really speak much my dad and I called him out of nowhere and said you want to take this trip with me so he drove, and I'm with my dad, who I don't really communicate with, and we took this trip down the Hudson River on this boat. And uh, when we got into the mouth of the fucking Hudson here, yeah, now, New now, York Harbor. The Hudson River isn't really that bad, but there are by parts way, the, around Manhattan that are fucking it, it, treacherous. By the way, I had no, I had no knowledge of boating oh, no. or anything. <laughs> oh, no. You don't need anything to buy a boat. You just buy it. You don't really need a license. You, and, go, uh, you, go to the, you have to register. You only have to go to the DMV to register the trailer that it sits on. Yeah. And when you do that, if they have one, they throw you a boating manual and say, you know, yeah, if you too. could, take a look at this. Yeah. So I just went out on the river just with no fucking idea. I don't even know how much my gas tanks hold. <laughs> oh, oh you are a fucking crazy. There was an accident waiting to happen. You don't even know where the next uh, gas station no. or the fill-up well, will be. Well, because I'm fine with if I run out of gas on the boat, yeah, okay. and then that's then someone uh, yeah, takes it and on I, they river. keep the boat. I don't care. Uh. <laughs> so I stop at a gas station, a boat. I find this river community there is. It's really fascinating. I stop at a gas station. He fills me up, and I just ask the I tell the guy, I'm going to New York City. Tell me everything I I need to know. So he goes, well, first of all, you, you're missing about 50 things that, <laughs> that are essential. That you have to have. You're in illegal territory. And it gives me life vests. But because I'm buying shit from him, he's happy to give me information. Sure. And he explains to me that the river is not, Hudson River is not a river. It's it's not a river at all. It's not a river with a source that's flowing to the ocean. Yeah. It's called an estuary. It's and a crack it's in the by tides. Yes, and it's basically the Atlantic Ocean sloshes up <laughs> yes. and, in and out of the river. And he says, if you hit Manhattan at a bad time, you're going to be in the Atlantic Ocean, <laughs> basically. What do you mean? You mean it's all this ocean water? Great. It's all, well, it's ocean water all... sloshing in and out, and it's all it's it's yeah, it flowing. Tides. It's flowing now, but it's tidal. It's a tidal yeah, estuary. It has tides. And so there was, because when I was on the, it was like glass. It was beautiful. Oh, I was. Of course. And he goes, it's not going to stay like that. Uh, it tried not to get there around rush hour, because also there's fairies down there. Yes. That don't care. Of course. Who you are. What yeah. You do. So that's, I just, I, I, won't, I don't listen to people. So <laughs> I showed up at like 5.30 p.m. on the fucking Hudson River, and I'm going under the George Washington Bridge. I mean, it's the craziest thing I've ever done. I'm with my dad, who's... 70 something. I don't even know how old he is. And my dad is trying not to show how much this is hurting his body because I'm his son and he does, he's ashamed. <laughs> yeah. But I'm actually oh, like, God I'm damn. fucking shattering his skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, like, his fucking teeth are falling out and shit. Yeah. And he's, he's just like, are you hearing that sound on the hall? That, <laughs> yo, <laughs> man, we're hitting <laughs> so hard. Bam sound. And I don't know how to do, I don't know how to ride a boat. So I don't know if you're supposed to. You probably to, like, didn't have it trimmed out right or no, anything. Nothing, nothing. Like you could trim a boat out for yes. water. Water, where you're putting the front end down. I know a little bit about water. that, but I don't have. Did a you have sense your trim tabs? Like I had a trimmy thing on the just... on the throttle. <laughs> and I'm trying <laughs> like, to make I that hard know. ride, man. But I was probably know. riding way back, yeah. just slamming Hitting into waves so hard. And the, <laughs> you think the hull's gonna crack? It's crazy. And then when we get further and further in, there's a point where oh. we're, I've got the full the 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 engine <laughs> running at full bore. <laughs> Bye. And, I ain't moving. I'm just going up and down. Bang, bang. Because the and I we also we realize me and my and we're getting soaked, and we realize that and and fairies are fucking booking past us. Just 
you know, crazy honking at us, not stopping Holy nothing. Shit. And where and and I realized that because I pictured what's the worst that happens? The boat sinks under you, and then you just tread water and you wave at the helicopter. <laughs> he picks you up or no, something on the helicopter. What, I realized if this thing goes down, the waves are just gonna. We're gonna just disappear into black water. <laughs> yeah, There's gonna be nothing done. left of us. And I'm trying to get, and also, I was supposed to park in New Jersey. I, like, rent, I called ahead and rented a space on a dock in New Jersey. Yeah, and I'll we'll slip. Next to Manhattan, and I'm, I can see New Jersey, but I can't get, I can't move. I can't get across the river. Kind of fucking ferries. piece of shit. And, no, and also, these waves are throwing me, like, towards these big fucking cement walls in Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> and with this big, sounds like a nightmare. Pile, it's like the worst thing ever happened. My arms are aching from, like, <laughs> trying to keep the boat. Trying to keep the boat in Did one you regret direction. your decision? <laughs> <laughs> I started to regret a lot. Did you wave to New Jersey as you were heading toward the ocean? Yeah. Oh. It took us. It took Goodbye, us. Goodbye, Jersey. Oh, my God. It took us about four hours to get the 120 miles from Hudson, the Hudson from Hudson, New York, to the George Jesus. Washington Bridge. Yeah, and from okay. the George Washington Bridge to that big Colgate sign in New Jersey. Yeah. I think that took us like several hours. I mean, it just took all fucking day. I mean, it was the worst thing. And then other times of the day, uh, the, the water sloshing out. And, you oh, know, no, that, that night, the way I got home was fine, I yeah. went home. I did research fucking like a person. You knew the tides at that I point? I sent my or? dad home on the train. <laughs> Because I had to get the boat his out of there. Shattered skeleton <laughs> yeah, yeah. and broken <laughs> teeth in his hand. Yeah. Put about fifty years on him. <laughs> Holy took a, shit! Took a few of the last few years he had left. Oh my god! That's and I horrible. got on the boat at like three o'clock in the morning. I got back on the boat and it was just like a piece of glass. And I stood on the boat, just got going around. It was the greatest. Then that was the greatest thing. By the Statue of Liberty, around the base under Manhattan, went up the East River. Yeah. By the uh, by La Guardia you know, and by the, prison. the UN building and everything <laughs> and the, the, the prisons. And um, I had the greatest right in the middle of the night with a fucking I would love yeah, to radio that, yeah. blasting, just standing on this boat, just fucking. And I earlier in the day, that. it was just bam. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, is that fucked? Was up. that the tides or just all the traffic? It was or both. A, well, both, because the traffic does the traffic stirs yeah, up. Shoot, that's really. just, it's sure. just cauldron. But it's the uh, fucking sick. When 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 high tide hits uh, in the Atlantic, yeah, it pushes. Uh, the water up the river. Yep. So the the actual river's flowing down from yes. the Hudson, but but the tide is stronger, so it it pushes it back. Yeah, pushing it back. Then when the tide lets go, all that fucking water that it pushed up comes rushing back in. Yep. Yep. Uh, but when you're going in, when the tide's coming up, and it's you're trying sick. to go south down the Hudson <laughs> yes. River, fuck you. It's That's crazy. the o you're battling the ocean. We're the only in a boat. tiny channel. We're the only boat going south. <laughs> Heading that way, and they were probably <laughs> all like, "Who is this what fucking what is idiot?" Going? And other boats were looking at us. I yeah. noticed it because we were going because we went under the Tappan Zee. We went under all this. Yeah. You know, when you're on a little boat. Looking up at those structures, they scare the shit out oh, of you. Yeah, like, it giant. makes you feel like you're standing on something Which too high. Nothing. Like it's, it gives you this vertigo yeah. when you're when you're by one of those pylons that supports the Tappan Zee Bridge, uh -huh. and you're going by it on a little boat. It's just you feel sick to your stomach because <laughs> <laughs> you're like, this is all just too huge for me. This is like Blade Runner. Like I can't, right? I can't hack. This. Wait, what kind of was like a little motorboat? It was like a, like a. It was smaller than that shit that's upside down in Florida right well, that's now. That's a twenty footer at. that we're looking at on TV. It was. I don't know how many feet it was. Totally yeah, it was go. four I, seat, four seats, front and back, maybe, or a, and I, a little tiny fake cuddy cabin. Can I solve this mystery for everybody? The NFL yeah. player thing. It's so obvious what happened because the the guy they uh, wow. they rescued was yeah. sitting on top. Of the thing holding on to the anchor. Yeah. When this fucking thing flipped over, it was every man for themselves, and it's yeah. like, fuck you. I know we're all friends, but now it's like whoever the strongest guy is is going to survive. Because yeah. there was only one slot to hang on, and That's it was right. the position that guy took. He was Kate Winslet while Leo, <laughs> yeah. while Leo froze in the water. I would, <laughs> slipped under the surface. I would bet money there was some kind of struggle, and this guy mm -hmm. won over the other three because they all went into panic mode. Because right. if you look at the boat, there's nowhere else to hold on to. Yeah. It's possible. Mm, you would think, you know, maybe life jackets. Uh, yeah, why like they? It feels like they yeah. got in a fight about something else. Yeah, maybe. Like maybe, why are you in the NFL and I? <laughs> <laughs> that's horrible. But, people are dead. But that's the only reason. That's, that's the only reason one guy survived. Mom, it's not me. It's not my kids. <laughs> that's the only reason Fuck one guy you. survived. It was the only one spot, one spot right. available, and there was four of them. That was it. So they went into panic. Maybe the one they guy chose got him. up there. Maybe they mm, chose fuck him. Fuck no. The other guy just 
They're uh, they're fish with the down. anchor. There was there's no way for four people. To... Look at the boat and how it's tipped over. There's no well, there's nowhere the to hold on to. What part was the anchor? That hole? That thing looks like a hole. They said they were anchored. I don't, know, I don't think. I, here's what but, I think happened because and and I'm taking it from my own stupid experience. The thing you don't realize till you're out there, like in in any kind of bad waters, you picture shit from a movie. <laughs> yeah. You picture shit going down and that you just step off the boat while it's sinking, and then that you and your friends tread water and talk about it for a while. <laughs> yeah. And that one by one. You lose, you try to help each other, and whatever the, a shark comes and eats one. Ugh. But there's this whole thing where the humans survive. But when right. a boat goes down, it takes fucking a nanosecond for your dumb little lungs to fill with water, and you're and you're, you're just dead. dead. <laughs> <laughs> sink, 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 sink. Gone. You're, those th the other three you're, guys, you're, you're being picked at by little fish yeah, as really you're going down quick. to the bottom, <laughs> really <laughs> quickly. Yeah, that's it. They're just that lifeless fucking dull uh, eyeball is just being plucked away. Oh god, it's just weird that one survived had a nice seat on top of the boat. He was yeah. Well, he King was lucky. He was, he was lucky or he had better reflexes because that shit yeah. happens really when a boat capsizes in bad water. It's just everybody dies. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's Pass. not a slow, hey, I think we're rolling over. Yeah. This boat's rolling no, over. Hey, oh. oh, oh, we're underwater. <laughs> I... Oh, that's not God. oxygen. Whoops. Dead. I'm dead now. But your boat story <laughs> rules. I always wanted to go up and down <clears> that <throat> Hudson River, too. Now I, well I learned a lot it. today from you. Oh, it was well worth it. I have to study it. some shit before I do well, it. Well, because I learned, because when we I went up to Hudson to get this house that now belongs to my ex-wife, we went <laughs> up, we, we found this town called Hudson in New York that's this really... It looks like Nantucket. It's a very colonial-looking kind of... It looks like a New England town. Mm. And I read about it, and I found out that what Hudson, New York is, it's 120 miles up the river. And uh, what it is is they were people from Nantucket who were whalers. And back in the 1800s, the British kept just burning them their ships and burning their town. The British would just sit... Outside of Nantucket and just lob. <laughs> Those British. There was no war going bastards. on. They were just being assholes. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. During the 1800s, that's the War of 1812 <clears throat> was just the British just being yeah. dicks. Yeah. <laughs> and us going, you really got to cut the shit, and them going, hey, fuck, fuck off, and just yeah. They would just launch cannonballs in and set Nantucket on fire for fun. <laughs> So a bunch of people near Nantucket said, let's just get out of here. And they, they all left together, all these whalers, and they found Hudson, New York, which was a nice place to build a town up the Hudson River. And so what they would do is they'd take their whaling ships. This is the fucking 1800s. People, like, with wood and iron. <laughs> yeah. They took their ships, and they'd go out into the fucking North Atlantic, and they'd kill a whale, and they'd drag it with these boats up the Hudson River all those fucking miles, and they'd cut it up and then send it down the river in pieces. <laughs> you know, that isn't right, man. Oh, the whale thing? Yeah, man. Oh, fuck. That like back then, there were fucking whales. <laughs> you could walk across the whales. You had to get a fuck of England. Em. Yeah, I got to go to England. I'm going to just walk. Step across whales. Walk, yeah. I'm going to drive my little fucking jalopy across the whales. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> but so then they, that was, they were safer there. The English couldn't get at them. They just so said, they, fuck it, we're going to Yeah, and then here. it became this port because people were, so farmers in sure. upstate New York would take their sheep and slaughter them in Hudson and send the meat down river to New York City. So fucking primitive. Yeah, so amazing. Yeah. And there's a uh, the town we bought a house in used to be a whole, all whorehouses for farmers. <laughs> really, <laughs> they were whorehouses with stables. Mm. So like a farmer would nice. drive his sheep to fuck a girl or a sheep. Yeah, yeah it was like a, a few miles out of Hudson. So the night before you went into Hudson to sell your sheep, you'd put them in a stable and fuck a whore, <laughs> <laughs> and then take your sheep the rest of the what way. What a home. great little system! I know everything like planned out. Then. Sort of make people happy. Exactly. Keep the economy going. There's a right. guy that had an yeah. experience like you did that you just told. Steve in Pennsylvania. Steve. Yeah, how you doing, guys? Good, Good evening. Say. Good evening. Uh, yeah, Catskill, New York. 20-foot uh, bay liner, single screw, uh, 175 horse. I read the tie charts. My business partner uh, had a 33-foot uh, carver we used to take down and, and uh, from that same marina, mm -hmm. go down around the, uh, the statue, come back. It was a great time. So I bought this 20-footer, put the wife, the two kids in it, my two girls, you know, young at real young at the time, and I took off, you know, big shot down the Hudson, beautiful ride, and I got down to that area that you're talking about. I was doing prop stands where the boat was just almost just like straight up, the front of the yep. boat straight up, motor just whining, you know, hull banging. Shit. 
I finally get into a marina because I needed fuel. My wife and my oldest daughter got off the boat and said, "We and are you never saw them again. <laughs> yeah, never saw not. them again. I'm running off at the gas station, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. No, that shit is gnarly. It's really <clears throat> fucking bad because it's New York Harbor. We Manhattan people don't understand. There is no Hudson. It's the Hudson's not on the west and mm -hmm. the east. There's no such thing as the East River. <laughs> yeah, that's what people don't understand. It's all in New York Harbor. It's a harbor of the Atlantic Ocean. Right. That we, the, on the left side, it looks like a river, so we call that the Hudson River. Yeah. <laughs> and then we call the East River it's the East River. It's just because there's Manhattan Island yeah, in the middle of it. in the middle of, of the so. sloshy, crazy, icy ocean. Yeah. So is it seawater? <laughs> the Hudson's at seawater? Well, no, it's so, certain times of day, it's, it's brackish, salt water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like salty. It pushes uh, the salt water it's water. It's where, yeah, yeah, yeah. water, whatever the fuck. And then when it's, when it's the river's running out, into the ocean, it's uh, uh, fresh water. Yeah, and where this guy is, is Catskill. There's a harbor. There's a little place there where you can take your boat in and you get something to eat. I mean, it's a fun world, the <laughs> boat world. But yeah, yeah it really. Yeah, you don't know what the fuck you're doing, like I didn't. Uh, I was in I was in the uh, boat world years ago with uh, my my mother and Sal. Sal was just Mister Fucking Boat. How big this guy was the boat? Have, his is a 38 foot sea oh, ray. Okay. I mean, it was really fucking nice, really nice. And he could, he would drink. He could park that shit anywhere. He would fucking drink uh, on, on the way from, like, I guess they were in, uh, where is it, Doc, Oakdale, mm -hmm. Long Island, uh, out to Watch Hill on Fire Island. And he'd be drinking fucking, we'd all you know, be slamming down drinks and stuff. He'd be making mudslides and blenders down in the kitchen and mm -hmm. this thing out of, like, a galley and everything. And he'd be hammered. And back this fucking thing into slips <laughs> yes. that, like, were, there's no, no way. these guys are amazing. They can do and that. Dual screws. Yeah. So he's running, like, the, the, yeah. the transmission to get the, the props going in opposite directions yeah, yeah. to turn the boat so he could swing the no, thing around well, the and first, then back it into the slip. Really, the first <clears> boat <throat> I had was a little uh, orange like with a white steering wheel, like it just looked like a little race car, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know. And it was a go kart two, for two the water seat boat, like yeah. really tiny little fiberglass boat that I saw on someone's yard for sale for eight hundred dollars. And I was like, "Fuck it, Bargain. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just buy it." And I just knocked on the guy's door, and he was like, "Really?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'll pay it." And I gave him the eight hundred bucks. It's just sitting there on a trailer. And then I'm like, "Well, now what do I do?" <laughs> like from scratch. Yeah. And I had an old, uh, an old uh, Ford Ranger pickup. And I went to the fucking Napa and bought uh, the ball. Trailer hitch. The trailer yeah. hitch. And I got the wrong size and went back. <laughs> and then I put the fucking... Already wrong. Yeah, and the, <laughs> guy, the guy watched from his window laughing as I tried to put a trailer hitch on a fucking <laughs> truck. It took me like an hour sweating. And then I took it down to the to the Hudson where they had to, you know, you back your boat down. Oh, the ram. Yeah, and I have no idea how to do it or what How'd to do. How'd you do? So there's an old man, literally an old seaworthy looking man with a white beard watching me do this. And he, I just decide I'm gonna, I'm not, I'm not just gonna try. So I just, Oof. I, I, it takes me hours to line it up because when you're backing something with a trailer, it's yes, yes. on it's you and backwards. you backwards. All of your instincts are let wrong. Let me, let me tell you, I, I, I had a, a jet ski. And I had the same problem mm -hmm. until somebody told me, put your hand on the bottom of the steering wheel, and wherever you want the back end of the trailer That's to go, genius. your hand, you let your hand go that way. So you, instead Nobody of trying to think that. right, left, you just, I want the trailer to go this way, yeah. I move my hand that way. That's really and if it's smart. on the bottom of the steering wheel, and then it got to the point where I could do it with my eyes closed after a while. Well, but I backed it down, and first I also, time, oof. The, the, the boat is strapped hard to a trailer. And the plug is out in the back of it. That's how you keep a boat. Right, yeah. You keep it strapped down to the trailer with <laughs> yeah. the plug in the back. Now, what I know now <laughs> is the way you launch a boat, and then it's tethered in the front by a winch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the way you do it is you let go of the strap. You take the straps off, so it's just loose, only held on by the winch, and you put a plug in the back of the boat so that when you when the, the trailer goes into the water, the wheels of the trailer go down in the water, and the boat floats on top of the water. Mm -hmm. Well, what I was doing was it's it's held to the trailer, so it's the trailer's dragging the boat, and it's fill, it immediately fills with water. It completely fills with water, and it's also because it's now weighs billions of tons, <laughs> threatening to drag my fucking truck, the truck in. Every, into the water. And I'm fucking, I am peeling Were out. Panicking? What's Popeye oh, doing? Watching is he laughing at my mind? Oh yeah, the guy, panic he's setting? just watching, and I have the car floored, the yeah. truck floored, <laughs> and the wheels are going. You're just trying to hold ground. Just trying not to, because it's 
just a shitty rear wheel drive, right. and the rear wheels are now in water. Oh, and I've just got water shooting everywhere and smoke. And that now the tailpipe is starting to go in, like I'm going in the fucking water. And somehow, somehow, I found some traction somewhere in there, oh. and the whole truck like lurched forward and is screaming wheels. <laughs> and the boat came out, gung gung, with water just just splashing. Everywhere. It was the craziest got a spectacle. <laughs> and I stopped, and I look up at the guy, and he goes, uh, he goes, try again. <laughs> he goes, what, what'd you learn? <laughs> what'd you learn? Fuck That's that. And so I got out of the truck, and I'm like, okay, there's a plug in the back that was dumb to keep it strapped. I said all this out loud, and he's going, uh-huh. Yeah. And Good. he goes, he said, he said, you know what? The guy said to me, you're going to be having the time in your li of your life in, in about half an hour. <laughs> and I waited for the boat to empty out, put the plug in, and, and if he was right. In half an hour, I was on the fucking river. Only a boat. This is great. With Only beer. a boat. Yeah, Socks. with beer. Yeah, I'll never do it again. Boy, how do you get it back onto the trail? Like, what if there's people to, there? You have to. No, you have. Yeah, if there's people there oh, waiting, man. like expert boaters. They'll start yelling uh, at they you. They hate you. They're not going to be they able to fucking I can't, yell at you. The thing I can't do that those guys do is just fucking drive my boat back onto the thing. And then, oh, and yeah, then yeah. run up to the, to the to the top of it and, yep. and winch you, it. You back, you back the trailer into the water. Yeah. And then Where's you, your boat while you do that? Your you boat is your kind boat of tied up yeah, on, on the side uh, by the dock. You, you back in. You quickly, because you're running now because you don't yeah. want to be the guy. <laughs> yeah. You get in your boat. You fucking give it a little juice and whoa, up onto the trailer that's kind of that's what halfway you're submerged. Do. Yeah. I don't have the skills, so I would use the ropes of the you got to cut back. Oh, would you pull it? Onto the trail. Sometimes, like the, we're using block and tackle. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and I'm trying to, and my feet are now in water, getting cut on the bottom of the yeah, fucking river. Yeah, really it's smooth beer by the ramps. Yeah, and beer where people throw their beer cans yes. and bottles. And I've gotten my fingers are bleeding, and I'm grunting. And there's a guy standing on his boat with his hands on his hips. Like yeah, just yeah. Fucking hating. All me. right, yeah. come on. We I used to wait for can't back it up guy. He yeah. they, they were the worst because you knew it wasn't going to get any no, faster once no. it got into the water. No. And it's like, and he's, you can see him trying to figure out if the back of my truck is going left, the trail is going right. All right, I got to I gotta do this. And then it's going off the side of the ramp, so he's got to vroom, go forward again, and you're just going, no. come on, <laughs> come on. And you're God just looking at your it. watch. Time is wasting. The sun's going down. You fucking want to get out there. God damn it. And I, I, once that guy told me with the hand on the bottom of the wheel, and then that, I would hang out the... the um, window of my truck and just look backwards yep. not even use the mirror because you couldn't really see no, the mirror doesn't help that yeah and uh just look out the back and I steer it right in really there smart, and yeah. then getting in was the same thing i'd back it up take the the jet ski and just whap, right up mm -hmm. onto the trailer you clip the front winch thing on there right. and right. don't even winch it all the way up no. now drive that fucker off the ramp yeah and then you do and your work take out care there. of your shit in the parking yeah, that's lot that's what you're supposed to do because there are guys are strapping their shit down on the ramp yeah they're putting like, the hey, beers dude, back in a cooler you can fucking it? do that in a parking space yeah. you prick yeah. uh there's a guy coal shoveler from richmond he writes tell louie that there are old retired guys that sit down by the boat ramps just to watch people like him and <laughs> yes. laugh at him yes. 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 that's yes. a hobby for these guys sharing really beers laughing oh, yeah. the boat world is interesting because it's two kinds of people <laughs> they're these sort of anarchist fuck the world people that you literally, you can tell they live on their boat and they hate you just for flo floating by. Yeah, and yeah. For not being them, and they literally they don't pay taxes. They live on a, you know what I mean? They're just off the grid boat people. Yeah. And then there's these people that are holding on to this idea that they're Mr. and Mrs. Howell, these fucking people. Because <laughs> in Hudson, this town I'm describing is a dump. It's all unemployed. There's no business up there. They have a boat club. On right on the river, and they're taking up the whole fucking river with their docks. Why don't you come down to the boat club when yeah, you're so done? Yeah, so I thought maybe I'll, use, maybe I'll rent a dock from them, so I don't have to launch every time. So yeah. I'm, they have all these empty space. There's just no boats there. So I go in this shitty, shitty looking boat club. It's just a fucking dump. It's like a like a fucking like a small airport, you know? Yeah. Like Syracuse Airport or something. <laughs> and I go in there, and there's these people in white sweaters and Get white shorts. Oh. And I go, "Do you rent We're the docks? Yachting. You have to become a member, and you." 
have to, uh, you can't become a member if you don't, uh, yeah, if you <laughs> don't. Uh, you you need a family. reference to become a member. <laughs> a Tell us a little about yourself. And I'm like, I make more than all you motherfuckers. Yeah, well, well. Are you, 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 this guy owns a fucking local car dealership, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And this cunt owns a Cumberland Farms. That's where they go to feel important and rich. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, are you, I'm famous, you motherfuckers. My word, show people, <laughs> not an art club. <laughs> My goodness. How much no. is it to rent a little space to park your boat? A slip. It's by the foot. And up there, they wouldn't let me. They just wouldn't let me because I'm not a member of their community. We but know yours... you're part Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I don't remember what it costs. I don't remember. In New York, in New Jersey, it's vastly cheaper than New York City. You're like every City's hour, you're sweating the hours. It's by the hour and it's by the foot and it's tons. Oh, of in, in New York, you can't just rent and keep your boats all the time. Well, if you're rich, yeah. And there, there's like some like the 79th Street boat basin. Yeah, there's a few marinas down that around has, Manhattan. Yeah. Like that's a public something, but that's about waiting lists and stuff. Like How much that. do you think they are? I mean, is it like you know, fifty bucks a day? I mean, I have no. Comfort. I don't even remember. It, I never uh, rented in yeah, New York. It, it's probably so much. Much more expensive than having a monthly parking uh, thing yeah. in a garage. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people pull them out during the winter and dry dock. Yeah. It's the cheaper what's, what's that. What's dry one. dock mean? You go. Uh, you play it's not in the they, water. Yeah, it's not oh, in the no, water. I mean, but like, where does it? Where do you dry they, dock? It? It's uh, a usually a boat yard. Oh. Yeah, a boat yard or an indoor warehouse. But then yeah. they they actually take them on these big lifts and stack them yeah. on shelves in these warehouses or outside. <clears throat> they wrap them in plastic. Right. And shrink wrap and then oh, that's uh, what those they things stack are? them. Yeah, I always thought they were new boats for sale. <laughs> I've seen those before. <laughs> it's a new boat for sale. I'll have that one. Uh, yeah, they, and they stack they stack them up and it, it's cheaper and uh, it doesn't get as damaged. You don't have to worry oh. about hurricanes and dry docking. It's a lot uh, could be a lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dry docking. There's another one. Yeah, another uh, definition. <laughs> Two unclipped men in heat. <laughs> <laughs> one with prostate problems. <laughs> dry docking. All right, so they'll wrap your boat in plastic. Do they Come and get it off the marina for you, or you got to bring it to them? I think they come and get it. I, 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 I think you need a truck to, like, you ever yeah. see those giant trucks with giant ships on yes. the expressway? Yes. And you're driving just going, what the fuck is yes. What is that? That has no business yeah. being on the road. <laughs> How big is, like, a good-sized yacht? Like, a good-sized fucking rich guy yacht? Well, geez, they, just, they get so huge. You get over, you start getting the over they, 50 feet, and you're talking, like, you you better know how to fucking drive this thing and yeah. and with everything. No. You got to know how to you get, back it in. You know how I got, by the way, you know how I got back to New York, back to Hudson because it was pitch black in some of that. I brought I took the the GPS out of my car. Oh shit! With a suction cup, that's what kind of had back then. And I stuck it. I swear to God, it's the smartest thing I ever did. No and shit! And I stuck it on the boat, and it fucking took me. It, it knew the contour of the river. Yeah. The wow. GPS is like, dude, uh, you're not on a road. I did can't have get you take anywhere. The fucking but, FDR. But this yeah. is where you are. For your information, I don't know why you're here, but you're here. And <laughs> there was a few times that it saved me because I couldn't fucking see, and I wasn't sure what part. But of... it doesn't tell you where the rocks are. Well, and also you can't. You know, that's you have true. to stay within a boat. You have it's to like him with, and Henry well, Fonda fishing channel. There's a boating, channel. There's yeah, a boating yeah. channel and you have to stay within it. But sometimes you lose the buoys and you don't. You you knew. And I did have a chart. Like I can read a chart and I know where a boating channel is. <laughs> yeah. But I couldn't see. I didn't know how far I was from either shore. It's it's. I'm in the Ooh, middle of fucking. It's that dark out there's, there. There's Jeez. a bay. There's a bay at the, right after the Tappan Zee. If you're going north, something bay that's just enormous. And you literally, you really can't see the left or the right. So you feel like you're in the ocean and it gets really scary. And, you and get turned the around. The GPS and, fucking yeah. told me right where I was and it. And there was times where I was That's headed hysterical. towards fucking land that I couldn't see because it was just car GPS. My car GPS got me back to Hudson. It probably says specifically not to be used <laughs> yeah. for maritime or yeah. uh, aviation use. Well, you can load them there. There, you can load them with those GPSs with maritime maps. You can. Yeah, yeah, you but I didn't can. I used the car get you home in your car map. I say the first thing I ever did, uh, and this was horrifically stupid. I bought a Sea Dew. A two-seater, uh, uh, you know, sit-down jet ski, a water, mm -hmm. water, personal watercraft, uh, which obviously I, I couldn't afford. That's another story. I, yeah, no. By the way, I was on all these boats I bought instead of groceries. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> right. part instead of why I'm not married anymore. I, like that. The one thing I'll cop to is that I did really dumb things with my money uh, my I, whole life. I, they wound up giving giving me a ten thousand dollar credit line 
credit card. Nice. Uh, because I had gotten a $5,000 one and maxed it out, yeah, but I was so. paying the minimum. Yeah. So they just sent me another one and said, hey, here's an application. I filled keep, it out, and I had up, some buddy. credit limit was $10,000. <laughs> you are a perfect like, customer. <laughs> now I got a $10,000 credit limit thing. So I went right down to the fucking uh, place where they sell uh, personal watercraft, uh -huh. bought a sea <laughs> And a trailer. <laughs> the whole thing came out to like eight thousand oh, dollars. So I still had two grand left on my credit card. Jesus. And I'm paying twenty five percent interest on <laughs> jet oh. ski and stuff. Believe me, it was it was a nightmare. But I had time of my life on that fucking of course. thing. Can you jet ski on the Hudson or no? Uh yeah, yeah they they do I, I've seen them out there, yeah. I've seen them a lot the, actually. Where I went though, I wanted to get out to Watch Hill on Fire Island. So I drove out to Patchogue early in the morning and I crossed the Great South Bay. And it was pea soup fog. Oh I couldn't God. see shit. I ripped a chart. I went into a store where they sold boating charts and Hagstrom maps mm -hmm. and looked for the page I needed and looked around and just tore it out and put it in my pocket. Wow. And I had a compass. And wow. every, every like two minutes, I'd pull out the chart and the compass, line up which direction I was supposed oh, to go, shit. and just keep going. Wow, wow. Wah, wah, through fog, and I could have been broadsided by a boat Easily. at any minute because uh, I couldn't be see. Alive. And then right when the fog broke, I didn't know where I was going to end up. I couldn't possibly think this was going to work. Mm. It said, "Welcome to Watch Hill." I I pegged it, fucking oh nailed That's Watch amazing. Hill from that is Patchogue. Amazing. Isn't that satisfying? And, and like, you feel good. It was like I I worked, but I only did it once, so I don't know mm. if it worked or I just got really fucking lucky. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to just drove did, and, and hope for the best. That's the <laughs> difference between you and I. Go in one direction. Yeah. Every two minutes. So, and then, no, and then when you become shut down. Aware of how much fucking fuel do I have? How much yeah, did I put in? And You start thinking like shit like, because I, I would I would stop the jet ski. So I'd just be like, kind of bobbing in the water. And I'd have mm -hmm. to chart out in the compass. And I'd look around and look down into the water. Oh, Jesus. And, and I can't see anything. I'm like. I don't know where I am, Jesus. man. I, I have no fucking idea. Those are if weird I'm moments heading. when you're like, I don't know how this is going to end up. This yeah, is yeah, it's an adventure. Shit that's happening mm -hmm. to me yeah. right now. This is how people, and you think that some people die. Yeah, exactly. They and find to, them dead. I used to say to myself stuff in weird situations like that, stuff like, uh, hurry, uh, but don't worry. Like, don't <laughs> hurry, but don't just worry. Just try to go fast without. Your hands shaking. Yeah. <laughs> if you can. I was in Antigua once doing a oh, show in Antigua. Great. And I took a jet ski and I said, How far out can I go? It was kind of a big jet ski. And this woman, bored woman said, You have to stay between these two buoys. But she didn't say how far out I, I could go. Yeah. So I just kept going out further and further and further away to like. The land is like a little brown strip behind me. <laughs> oh, shit. And I'm not really, I don't know nothing about water. So this is before I had boats or anything. And I'm starting to go up these gentle rises and then down in these valleys. And I'm not really aware of how that they're getting bigger. Holy shit. And I don't know how ocean... I'm in the Caribbean Sea. You're in the fucking ocean, yeah. dude. Which makes and, it harder to see the land now. Yes. And now, so then at one point, the last one I remember seeing was a that I A perfect storm I went, wave. <laughs> I went down. Yeah, it was like that, that I was going down into this valley of water. And I look, and all around me is blue water. Oh. I look, look, and I might look up, and I just see blue water just really gentle. It's oh. being it's being very... It was fucking, tricking you. Fucking it was me. tricking and you. And then I'm climbing. You. Then I'm climbing one and I'm going a little bit fucking vertical and I, I don't know what this is and then and then I go over the top and just fall yeah. <laughs> me and the jet ski just fall in two different people holy and shit hit really hard and then and then it all swallows me up and I'm fucking in huge stinging, stinging pain. My elbow, like I fucking injured it. Like I, I just couldn't. And then I come up, and the jet ski's in three pieces. Oh, fuck. What did you do? Three pieces. Oh, the the no seat, way. the body is bobbing around. The seat is somewhere over there. Over there, and then the handlebars, which have foam rubber on them, yeah. are going in, up and down like they're they're about to sink. And I look, and my now that my head, now that my eyes are two two inches above the water. <laughs> I can't Dude, you're see. So I can't see land. Nothing. Holy and I'm shit. thinking, what sharks? I don't know what this is. Of course. And then, uh, and I realized I, I'm really fucked. And uh, you know, I had the thing around my wrist that pulled the, the key little out. lanyard. Yeah, that and stops the jet Thank God that held. And I held it. I was like, my fingers hurt for how hard I was holding the keys because it was like life. And I swam to the seat. I just had like Bob in there. I'm like. 
Got to Don't gotta, tell me you put okay, this I need, back together. I need a plan. <laughs> so I, I swam for those handlebars first. Okay, you need them. that more they're than the They're really seat. heavy because they're underwater. I'm trying to hold them above the water so they don't wait so that they're hard. I'm dragging them through water. And then I, then I swam to the seat, I think. And then I got to the thing itself. You were able to put the whole thing back together? I, put, I, I threw the seat back up and I sat up there. I'm, now I'm just sitting. And I'm still going up and down and really up and scared. down. It's hard too when that thing's not running. The... It's very hard to yes. keep it uh, level. Yeah, the momentum. It's like keeps a bicycle. Going yeah, it's like yeah. a bicycle. If you're not if you're not moving yep. on a jet ski uh, or a personal watercraft, yes. the thing just wants to tip over and throw yeah. you off. So but somehow you the... I put the I put the uh, handle. I got I jiggered the handlebars in there. Oh please, it's it's a nice show up until <laughs> I'm now. <sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> wait, all right. so you, wait, you, you didn't need a screwdriver or anything, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> There's a gentleman going by on a boat, and I jiggered. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, There's no way he got this thing started again. I put I put it together and uh, put the I put the thing back on the key th the kill switch, and I took a fucking breath oh, and I hit that ignition. Now the ignition's on the handle. Isn't the ignition like, on the handlebars? I don't, yeah, I don't remember how. I don't you have know, to plug no, no, something no, no, it was in. On the body. It was like on the body oh, underneath was, the handlebars. Okay. Wait, the kill and switch is when, when your wrist pulls it out, this yeah, prevents it, it from up. going away. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It sh kills the motor. So yeah, I put the handy. kill switch back, <laughs> thing back on, and then I and then I just took a breath and said something to myself, Please like, work. like there's no, I can't pretend there's a God now. I never thought there was one before. <laughs> so I'm not going to be a hypocrite and ask for help. I just fucking hope this shit starts. Um, and I'm, uh, at this, I think I might be dying today, and I started it. And it started... And I just carefully went. And I went up. It was kind of nervous. Because now you got to go back as, up one of the waves, going, right? It wasn't as bad going. It's. I must have hit some like weird a road wave. Because it wasn't as bad once I fell off the thing, and it wasn't as bad going back. It was one of those. Let just, me, let my waves. head was fucking Killing burning, you. and I was also just getting sunburned sunburn. by the second. <laughs> let me tell you and something. I came back, when I came back, the woman's waiting for me, equally bored, and I didn't say nothing. I just fucking parked it and said, Park "Got the, my little license back." It's all broken. <laughs> so, you know, thank you. Jesus, you didn't even tell her. That's great. People. Saying you should be dead. It's yeah. easier on a jet ski to um, hit a wave head on, right? It, it, you where where the it. direction of the wave is coming at you, it's yeah. easier to go that way than to go with the wave. With the wave, you will fall off the other side right. of it. When you're going over a wave and it's coming at you, you right. you jump it, and right. you kind of have a landing ramp behind the wave where the wave then tapers into water. That's what you're supposed to. So to when do, you yeah. go with the wave, that's yeah. when I noticed you fucking. Especially if you're going real fast, yeah. holy shit, you fall. Wham! I've jarred yeah. my back really where I bad. felt like I, I was two inches shorter when you hit the By the, the way, the boat, I, the boat I took to New York, the thing I found out later again, and all in retrospect, <laughs> is that that boat has a cathedral hull, which means it's a oh, flat, yeah, weird. Yeah. It's not a, it's not a, uh, a nice like, V hull. It's not a V that's cutting through waves. It's this yeah. thing that's oh. just pounding, just slapping. It's like a hand. It's made for a hand is just slapping. It, it's waves. made as a river boat. <laughs> yes. Where uh, uh, it's a, a flat boat. bottom. Yeah. Yes. A, a boat that's going to go through some waves, you want a V hull on yes. it. Nice. Or the opposite v of the or... kind of boat I wanted. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You had the op it would have been better to capsize yes. your boat and ride on the bottom no. of it. <laughs> than to kill my father the way I did. So, poor dad. Is a jet ski like you? So you should get one oh. basically if you have like a big pool and just <laughs> yeah. zip around on a nice circle water. Yeah. yeah. Broom. They changed all the regulations because I used to go in uh, Huntington Harbor and Ashville. They don't want you to there. own those things anymore. No. I was. I, and they here's really what I do. Hard. I had a front compartment that was supposed to be for a flare gun and other safety <laughs> equipment. All that shit went. Beer. I'd load it with ice yeah. and just throw beers in there yeah. and go out into the harbor <laughs> and just tear it up full throttle, drinking a beer. Yeah. And, the, you know, the fucking uh, patrol is kind of just going around, but they never bothered the jet ski. They didn't care yeah. until... You get a few people to die, yep. and then they put all the regulations in place. And now, from what I hear, you can't even ride there. No, that's the thing. Uh, and There's if you can, no wake, no nothing. You know, wake cold beer, cold beer on a boat by yourself. There's something about that that's just sickly. Nice. Wonderful. It's, it's just the great. In the world. You're, you're by yourself. You, you got the power of a boat. It, it has you're... to be a can of Bud. Like, are you, yeah, are you yeah. Drinking. That's what it was. If you're drinking Italian beers in a bottle, the you just sea air, so. just not the same. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I, I rented a jet ski recently, and and the space they said, well, between that buoy, that and that, it was unbelievable how awful it was. Just little. Yeah, it wasn't even taking nothing, the thing nothing. out. And they're just waiting to pull those guys over. We jump boat wakes when they, when they would come yeah, in, no, and now anymore. they would fucking lock you up for doing that shit. There'd yeah. be a boat coming in. 
And the boat would like see you. You wanted to jump awake, so he'd gun it, Long Island make a perfect. big wake. You'd come right behind the boat, and that got real dangerous because you couldn't see who was trying to jump the wake from the other, other side. side right. And so many people just collided with each other. People wouldn't look too on jet skis. Like the first thing you do, and if you're really moving and you want to cut really hard left. Look over your left fucking shoulder. Yeah. It's simple. It's yeah, like it's a like car. Driving. It's like driving. People would just do it, cut, and wham, yeah. just get nailed by somebody yeah. else that's coming up on them. So people would actually collide in midair? Uh, yeah, as they were jumping over wakes. Uh, they'd come down on top of somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. It was insanity. Crazy, right. but... Uh, it was fun, an adventure, like Louis said. You never knew if you were going to die that day. No. <laughs> no. Uh, let's wrap up. Get the hell out of here. Louis C.K., it's uh, it's always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you. Nice to be you here. You got the Orpheum Theater March 14th in yes, Boston. Sir. Yes, sir. And all sorts of uh, social net. Which, uh, anything else you want to promote? Uh, Cleveland in April. Where's uh, all the uh, dates? On your Facebook? They're on your Twitter, your my website. website. My website's the best place to go because I actually updated the other things I never fucking do. My, LouisCK.com or Dot net. It's okay. got all my tour dates. I want to. I'm shooting another special, nice. either in Milwaukee or Cleveland, whichever one I sell the most tickets at. Right now, Milwaukee's. I sold out at the show, and we're adding a second uh -huh. one. So Milwaukee's kind of a front runner. Nice. Are they a good comedy uh, crowd down there? I did it last year. This place is the Pat Center. Over there, it the was great. Over but there. I'm playing yeah. the play. I'm playing we're the Playhouse playing. in Cleveland. Yeah. It's is it the big ragu's well? place uh, in Milwaukee? Uh, <laughs> I don't yeah, but Cleveland doesn't <laughs> never ragu. go from Rags to <laughs> Cleveland. Last year I sold out, and then I remember because it's not selling well this year. I was like, have money up there. I realized it sold. It sold out last year because of that shit with Maxwell. Well, like oh, right. All right. That's why, that's why it sold out because I got all this <laughs> attention because that guy hated me. Yes. <laughs> and this year it's back to normal, which is, is yeah, I just haven't have that right. many fans in Cleveland. <laughs> all right. And Jimmy's out of uh, San Francisco this weekend. Friday, Saturday, mm. and uh, Sunday. Suck his cock. Suck his cock. Suck cock. <laughs> And tonight I got uh, Red Eye. I'm on with uh, Ann Coulter, and I'm not sure who else is on. Watch that. The leggy Ann Coulter. Yeah. All right. Let's get out of here. Thank you, Louie. Thanks, man. Louis C.K.